Plus, major change inside the new push for an over-the-counter birth control pill, first in the U.S. Dr. Azar is here live with new details on the upcoming decision. Then social distortion, new guidelines just released on teens and social media. Sometimes it's like I get to the point where I know I've been on it too much. I just need to like balance it sometimes. From the right age to sign up to how adults can help monitor kids, the new information you need to know. And something to shout about. We are honoring a very special teacher this morning, known for her life lessons in enthusiasm. Chanel's heading to her hometown to help the community give back to the teacher who gives so much to her students. As we celebrate Teacher Appreciation Day, today, Tuesday, May 9th, 2023. Visiting from El Paso, Texas because... Mama's Charity Party. Cindy loves our parents, parents in Huntsville, Alabama. Alabama. Hi, DJ and Pops. And Nani and Papa. Here with my sisters. From Selma, Alabama. On a seventh trip to New York. Happy Nurses Week to all my friends back in Lansing, Michigan. How are our sons, Wes and Will? In Nashville. Celebrating our 22nd anniversary. From Las Vegas. Yeah. From, From San, San Jose. Jose. Dad's been watching today for 70 years. And today I turn 80. We are back. It is 8 11. Today's talker, and this morning, some new guidelines for kids and social media. Okay, the American Psychological Association is making recommendations about how much time teens and tweens should spend online and ways to help them have a healthier mindset while they're using those popular apps. And Jenna's here looking yeah. into it. Good morning. You guys, we talk about this ourselves yes. all the time. Earlier this year, the Surgeon General said he thinks 13, okay, get that, is too young to use social media apps. And while the debate plays out in Washington and in homes across the country, if your teens are already online, experts say there are ways to keep them safe. Across the U.S., nearly every teen says they've used social media in some form this past year. And this morning, the American Psychological Association released new guidelines to help them learn healthy behaviors online. Among the 10 recommendations, adult monitoring for kids ages 10 to 14 using social platforms, routine screenings for signs of problematic use, and adolescents avoiding apps for social comparison, particularly around beauty or appearance-related content. Conversations many parents, like Ray Kilmer in upstate New York, are already having. His three kids, including 15-year-old Elizabeth, don't get cell phones until eighth grade. The now ninth grader has some restrictions, including a time limit for TikTok, blocked videos, and her phone is kept downstairs after bedtime. Clearly outline what her expectations are for her, and then she understands what the consequences are if she doesn't meet those. It's made me feel like I have more responsibility because like, I know that they trust me with that stuff. Keeping kids safe online, a growing national discussion. From here on today, where actress Jennifer Garner told Hoda and Savannah she's keeping her three kids off social media. I just said to my kids, tell me, show me the articles that, that prove that social media is good for teenagers, and then we'll have the conversation. Oh. How do they feel at this point? Uh, my eldest is grateful. To Capitol Hill, where a bipartisan group of senators introduced new legislation in April. Their proposal aims to ban kids under 13 from signing up for social media platforms and requires parental consent for 13 to 17 year olds to use popular apps like TikTok and Instagram. This comes as more studies show how being plugged in on social can impact mental health. A recent CDC study shows nearly three in five teenage girls feel sad or hopeless. One reason the report suggests because 16% of high school students, most likely girls, are electronically bullied through texting or social platforms like Instagram and Facebook. And just last week, the Surgeon General's advisory on loneliness suggests an increase in online versus in-person interactions is making Americans feel more isolated. Sometimes they feel worse when they see people doing things without them. But for Elizabeth, she says her relationship with social media is overall a positive one. Sometimes it's like I get to the point where 
I know I've been on it too much. I just need to like balance it sometimes. Balance it because they're down. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I can't stop talking about it. Because it is an interesting subject. And here's one more social media guideline for everyone can use, not just teens. It is a lot of time, you know, it's so easy to spend time just scrolling. scrolling. We've yeah. talked about this, but make sure it doesn't interfere with your sleep schedule, obviously, your, or um, your physical activity. The other thing is, don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, it. if we're, here's the thing. If, you, if the three of us as the mothers in our household yeah are constantly scrolling, mm -mm. what do you think They're our kids scroll. are going to want to do? I We're think, modeling it. I think some parents watch and say, uh-oh, I've already given my child a phone. whatever the phone, yeah. the app, or whatever, and can you unring the bell? Well, and, and Jenna was just pointing out yeah. we were chatting during the piece that for a lot of folks, it was during the pandemic. Yes. Well, we all you know, did. The guardrails we all did. came down yeah. yes. by necessity, and then it's like, how do we unring the bell? Well, how you, do we call I it mean, back? I thought this was interesting. You, a, a few months ago, you said you your kids had 20 minutes of screen time, yeah. and you were going to take it away. And yeah. how was that going to go over? Well, I just was like, why do they have screen on the weekday? They yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. So we had kind of started letting it so Mike and I could have a bite together, and I just was like, I'm no. So one day I just was like, we don't have screen during the week yeah. anymore. I thought it was going to be like explosion city. Explosions. They were like, okay. Okay. No, kids, and we never look yeah. back. Kids like boundaries. Yes. And, and the other thing is, yes, we had a pandemic time. Yeah. We're no longer in it. Yeah. Yeah. So kids can play sports. They can go yes. outside and play. Be they with can their read. Friends. They can be with friends. Yeah. And the thing is, when you're on a phone, you have this false sense of connection. Yeah. Yes. You think you're with people, yeah. but you're not. Yes. And that is what the Surgeon General is, is talking about. I don't even think you're with yourself yeah. when you're scrolling that phone. You're right. All I done mean, it. you I, got off Instagram. Yeah. I got off yeah. Instagram. You I got off too, Instagram yeah. for periods of time because what happens is it's addictive. Yes. Well, I think it's scary when you think about a, a child's brain, how malleable it is. There are no studies to say what happens to a well, child's brain guess after what? years guess what staring this, at this Surgeon phone. Guess what the Surgeon General says? Huh? He says there are studies that Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, yeah. Twitter, they have done studies yeah. internally on and what it looks like for an adolescent girl yeah. and boy and brain, whatever to yeah. use it. But that is not public information. Well, and there are, there well, one, be. you know, yeah. they always say those Silicon Valley executives don't let their kids no. on it. That dopamine yeah. hit that every time you get a ding, I got or a like, yes. I got a this. Or a like, or if you don't get a like, brain. what happens yes. to your brain? And the, and the thing that's hard is one of the guidelines is don't compare yourself. But that's easier said that's, than that's done. What, that's what it is. Because we can all say that we've been at home, you know, hanging out and looked and seen that, for, and we're you know, middle-aged women. <laughs> yeah, and Road see that is other enough. people are, are doing on vacation <laughs> yeah. or yes. something, and thought for a minute. That Imagine you can feel happy and bummed out within one minute when nothing has changed in your circumstance. Yeah. Not one thing yes. other than what you saw. We could yeah. go on and on about this, but there's like two issues going on. There's when you should give the phone. Yes. Yeah. And then there's social media. Yeah. And, and I so think a lot of, the phone as long as possible. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, you know, there's the wait for eight wait campaign, till eighth grade. wait till eighth yeah. grade. I'm on board. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah. Yeah. Should we, should we sign it right now? Well, Wait, yeah. Because there's the problem that kids will go, at peer pressure, I'm the only one without a phone. And these yep. campaigns that are wait until eighth, you get all the parents together. The we school. All, yes. yes. You don't need 100% you know participation. Even right, if just it's enough. just the three of us, I yeah. can say, well, sorry, Mila, Vale's mom is doing yeah. it too. Yes. What about, exactly right. What about Hoda's oh, mom? Oh, Hoda's mom is doing it. <laughs> yeah. no, not, you're not Hoda's oh, okay, mom. You're, you're, right, mom. you're, you're right. Haley and Hope's right. mom. <laughs> Hoda's doing it too. Yes, and then yeah. don't blame y'all. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay, My life will good. be very I like easy. that. Yeah. All right. Jenna, that was good. I love that. We could have this conversation could, daily. There's so on, much yeah. more to talk yeah, about. There, there really is yeah. because also it's like enforcement. If you want to make this rule, you have to be yeah, prepared to right. be in it every day. And every day yes. your kid's going to be like, can I get my phone? Can I get Let's the social media? Let's just say yeah. that the Surgeon General, who is smart, I've met yeah. him, he studies everything, says 13, he thinks, is the appropriate age. 13. You know, or is even too young for social yeah. media. That's when it, you start to even talk about 13. it. 13, wow. Okay. All right, Jenna, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Rant over. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
back with more of our special series, Today's Hero. So yesterday, y'all, we celebrated nurses. Yes. This morning, we are turning our attention to the men and women who are in classrooms every day preparing the next generation for the future. So for Teacher Appreciation Day, Chanel has traveled to her hometown of Wichita, Kansas, with a great story. <laughs> Hi, Chanel. Good morning. Hi, Miss Pow Pow. <laughs> this assignment of course I was happy to come home but guys here's the truth when I walked into the classroom to interview her yesterday I was like wait I know her <laughs> like not only do I know her I went to elementary school middle school and high school with her I was like Shay <laughs> so now she's affectionately known as Miss Pow Pow her name is Miss Lachey Pow and she went viral on TikTok not just viral she had 10 million views as you can see her students love her and you're about to see why. That is the moment high school history teacher Lachey Powell went viral on TikTok. What is this? Wait, go, go and the video viewed over 10 million times shows sophomores at Northeast Magnet High School near Wichita surprising their beloved teacher with a special gift. I just lost it. And, and, and I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know what was in the bag. It was just the idea of the thank you. I opened it and I was like, wait, I can see those, those numbers. Like those numbers are saying everything. So what was in the bag? A customized Steelers jersey, Miss Powell's favorite team. <laughs> Miss Powell, affectionately known as Miss Pow Pow by her students, isn't afraid to rock the Steelers black and gold in Chiefs country. It's a fandom that started decades ago during a chance meeting with the then young quarterback for the University of Colorado. I was able to meet Cordell Stewart. I was 12 or 13. I was like, oh, he's going to be my husband. I'm going to grow up and marry Cordell Stewart. And um, he obviously went to the, the Steelers, and I was like, well, that's my husband's team. So what is it that makes Miss Powell so special to her students? She pushes us to our full potential. One thing she always preaches is learning and growing. She is a very difficult teacher, but it's because she knows we can do it. And it just teaches us that no matter how hard an assignment is or no matter how hard something can be in life, we can overcome it. Those sentiments echoed by Matt Creaseman, the former principal at Northeast High. She holds students to high standards. She builds great relationships with them. But every now and then you'd have a rough day and one of the ways that I could make myself feel better was to go sit in her class and see what it's all about. Even after teaching for 22 years and working a second job, Ms. Powell hasn't lost her passion. When they understand kind of like the method to your madness, when they get it, it it's everything because you can take them to places that they don't even think they can take themselves. One of Ms. Powell's biggest champions, her mom, a frequent visitor at Northeast Magnet. She passed away in 2020. And so many of us remember your mom. She's the reason why I am who I am. She pushed me. She pushed me the way I push my students. And I really do believe it's her spirit, the spirit of um, my mom moving through all these people and all these great things mm. that are happening, saying, little girl, you did all right. <laughs> I think you did okay. We're going to evaluate him, his job performance. With the outpouring of love for this Steelers diehard in Kansas shows how exceptional Miss Pow Pow really is. Teachers give everything to do this job. It's not for the faint of heart. We thank you for trusting your young people with us. You always question, you always wonder. This is now finally after 22 years saying, you did a good job. You did a good job. I love it. I love it. I love it. What does it mean to you to see all of your students here? This is actually just a fraction of your students and the love that you're getting so far this morning. Oh my gosh, it is. It's, it's overwhelming. It means so much. It really does. I don't, so. Well, you mean so much to us. So I think it's time to do something special for Miss Pow Pow. Don't you guys think so? Yeah. All right. So we
we know you're a Steelers fan, even though you know we're in Kansas City Chiefs country, so I can't even believe I'm doing this. But they know that you're a fan, too. Do they? They do. So they actually want to do something special for you, and they are giving what? you two tickets Don't do to that. an upcoming game, any Don't game you that. want. Yes, they are. Can we what? Get yes. <laughs> You know what? what? We actually have someone special to give you the tickets. Is there anybody here that can give her the tickets? Anybody? Oh my God! Okay. Right here. Ms. Pow Pow. Oh, <laughs> what would you like to say to Ms. Pow Pow? Well, Ms. Pow Pow, on, on behalf of myself and the oh, Pittsburgh Steelers, we would like to present to you two tickets oh, to man. one of this season's games. Oh, wow. So you better go out and enjoy yourself and have a great time. Oh, But I would man. like to also, in the process, yes. give you my autobiography. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. We met way back in Colorado. We did. You remember? I remember. She didn't think you'd remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and there was a story, and there was a story that happened all the way up to this point, so you'll have it. a chance to read everything about so it. So now here's the thing. Oh, don't go anywhere so that way, you know, she can get her pictures and all that. I feel like we should do one more thing for Miss Powell, Powell, don't you think so? Uh, okay, so here's the deal. So here's the deal. I know it's kind of hard to top, but we shared your story with Intrepid Travel, and they want to give Miss Pow Pow a $5,000 voucher wow. to go anywhere she wants in the world. No! A dream vacation. This is insane! And your kids here. No. Shay Powell, she doesn't talk about it, but she oh, works two geez. jobs as a teacher. Yes. It's not always oh, easy. She's wow. here day in and day out, and I know you haven't given yourself any time for self-care. So with that $5,000, my friend, you can go anywhere in the world. Oh, my god! How much do we love Miss Pow Pow? Thank you so much. What would you like to say in behalf of teachers everywhere? Uh, we talked about the fact that we know your mom is just smiling from heaven yes. this morning. Yes. Her mom was a spunky woman. She would come yes. to the classroom, help her decorate, help decorate for prom. Yes. What would you like to say? I would just like to say to teachers everywhere, keep doing what you're doing. You are changing lives. Every sleepless night, all that grading, all that feedback, everything you do, it's all worth it. it it's worth it. Congratulations. We appreciate you. Congratulations. Hold on. Who's there today? Savannah. Come on. Between. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> New couple alert. Oh, Thank you. Oh, my Sweet. Oh, my God. That was great. Miss Pow Pow Cornell Storm, what a guy. Man. Reunited after all these years. Well, that was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> Chanel, thank you. That was great. Let's let them enjoy their moment. Thank you, Miss Pow Pow. Uh, wow, beautiful. And we're going to have more coming up on the third hour with the two of us. I would watch I want six more. hours of this. More, more, more. Chanel, well done, Way to go. Friend. Good job. Way to go, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, Cordell. All right, coming up next, guys, we've got the stars of the new movie about my father. We've got Robert De Niro, Sebastian Maniscalco. But first, this is today on NBC.
We're back. Two big stars here in Studio 1A. The man who's been called the hottest comic in America, Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, and two-time Oscar winner Robert De Niro. Sebastian's Italian immigrant father was often the main inspiration for Sebastian's stand-up act. Well, now he's taking his life story to the big screen in a film he co-wrote. It's called About My Father. De Niro stars as his dad, Salvo. And when Sebastian says he's spending the 4th of July weekend with his girlfriend's wealthy family at their summer home, Salvo does not take the news so well. So they got more money than us. Who doesn't? Plus, it's just for one weekend. Oh, one weekend, he says. One weekend. 50 years ago, I come to this country to give you a better life. 50 years ago, I skip every weekend in Sicily for you. I joined the U.S. Army to protect your freedoms. And what thanks do I get? You go celebrate the 4th of July with some other family, leaving me to burn the sparklers and eat the hot dogs alone. <laughs> alone! Alone! Hi, Sebastian. Hey, Bob. Good morning. Good morning. to see you. Morning. Okay, look, this is your passion project. You've been wanting to do this forever. That's beautiful. Then you want someone to play your father. Yeah. You choose the most wonderful person on earth. How did this ask come? How did this come to be, this union? <laughs> so I met Bob uh, on The Irishman, a movie that we did. Yeah. And then he had come to see a show at Radio City. But I don't I didn't have his phone number. It's not yeah. like I called him up one morning going, Bob, you want to do my movie <laughs> as my father? Uh, but he got the script through Paul White's. Yeah. And uh, he, you know he read it and enjoyed it. And we read it out loud with a bunch of actors. Next thing you know. Today show. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, do you think he was really funny when you saw his stand up? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, no. 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 Be serious. Oh, what made you no, want to do this movie? No, I, I was aware very much of Sable. We had just worked together in yeah. Irishman, and we had a little bit of. Um, he was upset that I killed him in Irishman, so uh, we had a little, few therapy sessions uh -huh. to work that through before <laughs> I would consider doing He'd consider working with me with this movie. But anyway, Paul White sent it to me. I, yeah. I liked the script. I asked if we could have a reading, a table reading with uh -huh. actors. I do that a lot. There's something I'm considering, and so I did. Mm -hmm. We did, and, and then I met Laura Taruso, who's mm -hmm. a terrific uh, director, and she's from that world. She's from New York, mm -hmm. Italian neighborhood. And, uh, and um, between Sebastian and, and Salvo and, and Laura, I, I um, felt I was it. in good hands and a good, r solid foundation what, the whole thing. I like that. When was the very, 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 very first time you met Robert De Niro? It was on the side of the Irish. No, no, no. You no? met him before. Did I? Yeah. Where? Weren't you a waiter? Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Let's go You're back. Right. You're right. Come on, Let's take me take back. It back. <laughs> Four Seasons Hotel, 2002, 2003. Yeah. He sits outside. I, I, I tell everybody, I got De Niro. I can't believe. I go up to him. I think he had a tea, and then uh, we had some almonds, and then he requested more almonds. Of course, I uh, I ran to get the almonds, and uh, it, it was crazy. I, I I waited on this guy in like oh two. Yeah. Now he's playing my father in a movie in 2023. And so you, it's, it's it's. And you had like Godfather posters up on your wall the whole night. Yeah, the casino, yeah. the Goodfellas, the whole thing. The whole thing. And uh, it's just surreal that this is even happening. So uh, it's been a really great run. So your dad hears mm. that Robert De Niro is playing him in this movie and? Come from a real negative family. <laughs> um, so of course it was met with uh, skepticism and yeah, right, this guy ain't gonna do it. What do you think, you know? So uh, I think my dad had sunk in when, uh, when Bob called my father and said, listen, I need you to come down to Oklahoma. We need to go over to script. So my, my father's a hairstylist and all of a sudden now he's doing script analysis <laughs> with the, the greatest uh, actor of all time. So uh, they, uh, they spent a couple days yeah. together and uh, he got, they got to know my dad, yeah. and, uh, and what's his da what's his dad like, Bob? His, his father was very nice, yeah. uh, Salvo. We had a nice time together, yeah. and, and I went over things in the script I was uh, wanted to know about, and uh, with the uh, yeah, I was you know, shown, uh, um, and and we we had a nice time. Then I took him to meet Marty Scorsese on the set. And, oh, cool! Uh, yeah. Can you believe what's happening with your life? What's happening? 
happening with your life? It's just an unbelievable moment that yeah. I'm doing this press run, uh, not only with Bob, but my father's on some of these oh, interviews. Fine. So uh, my father's <laughs> getting a big head now. He's requesting things now. When <laughs> like we what? go to the interview, I need almonds. I need uh, <laughs> you know coffee. We were doing an interview. They brought in espresso. I go, what are you, what are you doing? What are you, he goes, I'm a star. <laughs> So, uh, well, y'all, this movie is so much fun. You guys are so great together. Um, and I know people are going to are going to want to check it out. You can catch About My Father. It is in theaters May 26. Yes. We're back in a moment. But first, this is today on NBC. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Good dad. Uh <laughs> on the plaza and here are our plaza picks. I'm here with the San Pedro family. They traveled the farthest to be with us. They came all the way from the Philippines. Oh, wow. Uh, now say hello to the Francis family from Huntsville, Alabama, stopping by. These are the folks who were taking an RV all over America for a year. That's oh, wow. Oh, cool. Yeah. The four of them. That's fun, guys. And I got to meet Angie and her daughters, Emily and Delaney. Aren't they cute? They're from the great city of Tucson, Arizona. Tucson. And Angie is a teacher, so we send all her love to the students in the Amphi School District. Of course, I am a product of the Amphi School District. You myself, are. Amphi High School. Don't want to look at my transcripts from those days, but... <laughs> true. All right, guys, coming up on Hoda and Jenna, we've got actor and director Emilio Estevez. First, though, coming up in just a few minutes on the third hour, Bill Nye, live to celebrate 30 years as the science guy. And we're going to have much more fun with Chanel and Miss Pow Pow, Cordell Stewart stuck uh, around. Okay. This morning on the third hour of today, Tiger's legal battle. New claims of sexual harassment by golf legend Tiger Woods' ex-girlfriend and the $30 million lawsuit against him. Why today could be critical for the case. Plus, social media do's and don'ts, new guidelines for kids, what they should be avoiding, how to set boundaries, and what all parents need to be on the lookout for. Then, later, Bill Nye, live in Studio 1A. Volcano night, it's a blast talking about his new show and 30 years of the science guy and a mother's day meal that will leave the whole family stuff and it only costs about 20 bucks that's all ahead today tuesday may 9th 2023 live from studio 1a in rockefeller plaza this is the third hour of today and a good tuesday morning welcome to this third hour of today craig melvin Jill Martin Brooks, Vicki Wynn, as uh, Chanel likes to say, cousins of the show. Yes. Um, and they're here because Al is out for his knee surgery. We're Hi, Al. Wishing him a speedy recovery. You know he's watching yeah. on that, too. Oh, he is. And, and Matt, our producer, said he's on a need to know basis oh, and texted it to Al. And Matt, he's very proud of you. Oh, so he's, uh, he's laughing still. Oh. Uh, so Dylan's on assignment, <laughs> by the way. Dylan's on assignment. And Chanel, perhaps you saw a few minutes ago, our awesome. girl Chanel Jones is back with her people in Wichita, Kansas. 
Kansas with something really exciting. We're going to check in with her in just a few moments. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was. But first, we do have a lot of ground mm -hmm. to cover on this Tuesday morning. We're going to start with Tiger Woods in a legal battle with his ex-girlfriend. Yeah, Erica Herman is suing Woods for $30 million. And now she's asking a judge to toss out the non-disclosure agreement that she signed. NBC's Kaylee Hartung is following the story this morning for us. Hey, Kaylee. Hey, good morning, guys. So today, Tiger Woods attorneys will ask a judge in Florida to keep that NDA in place and keep this case private. But Herman's lawyers are presenting evidence of their own, as she now claims she is a victim of sexual harassment. This morning, the latest legal fallout from Tiger Woods' relationship with his ex-girlfriend, Erica Herman. Woods and Herman began dating in 2015, while Herman was an employee at his Florida restaurant, The Woods Jupiter. According to court documents, Woods forced her to sign an NDA or else be fired from her job. Her team claims Woods, who was Herman's boss at the time, imposed an NDA on her as a condition to keep her job when she began having a sexual relationship with him. A boss imposing different work conditions on his employee because of their sexual relationship is sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is often about power differential at work. You can't imagine a bigger power differential than an employee at Tiger Woods Restaurant, which bears his name. Herman arguing the sexual harassment invalidates the NDA. In a 2017 email included in the filing, Herman raised concerns about the agreement with Woods' business manager, writing in part, if by chance TW does something that brings our relationship to an end, do I automatically lose my job? I don't have any problems with what's in the document, but with my whole life in his hands now, if something happened, I don't want to be in my 40s, heartbroken and jobless. Herman is also asking the court to deny the cause compelling arbitration and is suing Woods Trust for $30 million in a separate case, where she claims Woods kicked her out of his home where they lived together until October of last year, their breakup making headlines. According to Herman, Woods told her he planned a last minute getaway for them to the Bahamas. But instead, she says they were met at the airport by a lawyer who informed her she would never see Woods or his home again. For now, the personal life of the famously private Woods playing out publicly in a courtroom drama. Tiger Woods had ankle surgery last month, so it's unlikely we think that he'll appear in court today. Representatives for Woods and Herman did not respond to our request for comment, guys. All right, uh, Kaylee Hartel. Okay. Kelly, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let's turn now to some sweeping new guidelines just released by the American Psychological Association examining the, the effects of social media use on adolescents and, and laying out what parents should be doing. Our senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres, joining us now to help break it all down. Again, these just came out a short time ago, these guidelines. A lot of parents are very interested, but we should point out we're not talking about one size fits all. They, they vary based on a child's age, who they interact with online, but what can parents take away from the guidelines. And I think that's the main lesson here is that not one size fits all. Your children develop at certain stages. At younger ages, they can't handle quite the social media they can at later ages. And even a 10-year-old isn't a 10-year-old. Some of them are younger, some of them are more mature mm -hmm. and can handle different things. So as a parent, you know your child and you know what they can and can't handle. So you need to start following them and realize that you need to step in and make sure that you are understanding what they're seeing, how they're interacting with that, and what their thought process is because what they learn now is going to follow them later in their years as children and definitely as adults. You want to make sure that you help them out there. Dr. Torres, something that Al Roker does that I have adopted in my own family mm. is taking away the phones at night. That's one way at least yeah. you can limit screen time, which gets wildly out of control for a lot of us, even as adults. What are some of the key recommendations when it comes to what we parents can do to protect kids from social media harms? You know, when I was preparing for the segment, we were joking about when I was a kid, we used to have a flashlight and a comic book under right. the bed covers, <laughs> yeah. and now our parents would get mad about that. Well, this is our equivalent of that. So I agree with you, you know, taking it away before they go to bed because you can imagine if you're 14 years old and right as you're about to go to sleep, you look on social media and all your friends are at a party, mm -hmm. you didn't get invited to. You're not going to sleep that night. And so make sure that you have limits and boundaries with your children. That's extremely important. And mentor the same thing for them. You know, if they see you using it yes. while they're talking to you, right. they're going to do the same thing. And have those adult child discussions. Use these 10 points as a starting point and say, you know, what do you think of this? And start coaching them through what they need to know as they start getting older and even now. I was just going to 
to say this pertains to adults too. Yep. We all go 100%. down this rabbit hole too, too and set an example. Um, now let's get to the benefits because there actually are some that came out of this, right? No, there's some great benefits to it and they, even the American Psychological Association said yes, we understand this is their life and this is going to continue to be their life. You can't avoid social media and it gives them those interactions. It gives them the ability to connect with other people in ways that we didn't have when we were children. But at the same time, it's that double-edged sword. You want to make sure that they're handling it well. And if they are having issues, particularly things with you know cyber hate type situations, bullying type situations, you know, looking at a lot of the, the image issues that might be going on social media, you want to make sure that that's understood as well mm -hmm. and have good dialogues with them. It said, you know, one of the things, they talk about screening for signs of problematic use. If you see your child using this in a way that you don't think is appropriate, it's interfering with their life, interfering mm -hmm. with their relationships with other people, then sit down and have a discussion with them. Have a big dialogue with them and just say, you know, let's talk about this. Let's keep the dialogue going. A lot more listening than talking with your children is the way to go. And just make sure that you do that as the years go on and keep a good handle on what they're looking at because they're children. They're learning. They yeah. need to learn from you. An and you need to like, make sure that you are giving them what you think is right and appropriate for these things. And kids like boundaries. Like we, the kids, so they, they respect boundaries. They do. And, and I always tell people, I said, you know, one of the things that's, uh, I don't want to sound mean saying this, but be a parent. Yeah. Yes. You know, be a parent don't and say, best friend. yeah, no, and just true. say, the, these are restrictions. These are your limits. Give me your phone before you go to bed. Yep. yep. I'm, not, I'm not your friend. I'm your father. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Dr. John. I, God, I just sounded like my. Yeah, yeah you really, <laughs> you really, you really you sounded did. like Mr. Melvin. Oh. All right. Thank speaking you. of connections, Thank now you. on to a celebration of a very special teacher for Teacher Appreciation Day. Chanel flew to her hometown of Wichita, Kansas, and pulled off an epic surprise. They're still celebrating for a deserving teacher, Lachie Powell. Chanel, that was unbelievable. Can you even hear us? Good morning. Good morning. It was so special. I said earlier this morning, I got the assignment, and you know how we travel. So I saw the name, Miss Powell. Okay. And then when I walked into the classroom to interview her, I'm like, oh, we go way back. <laughs> same elementary, same middle school, same high school. So here's why we were here. Originally, our producers found her. She, these amazing students, put this video on TikTok when they surprised her with a Pittsburgh Steelers jersey. She's a hardcore fan. She was so thankful over this video that you see here now. There are, I checked this morning, 10.5 five million views. Wow. What? I mean, it's out of control. Oh, so, and that was just the start. So we came here, we surprised you with two tickets to the game mm. with Cordell Stewart, who she just loves, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> How did it feel this whole morning? Oh How's my gosh, overwhelming, super excited. I mean, just the emotions are just over the top. It's out, it's out, just out of my mind, out of control. I don't even know. The energy in this room, it's you can feel it, can't you? Yeah, you can, you can. And, and I'm in a hallway, right? So I'm trying to process how am I going to go about this thing because I'm having a chance to see it on a laptop from afar. So I'm like, when I walk out and she walks away and I hear the, the, file, uh, the fans going nuts, I'm like... Will you come over here real quick? Before I pass <laughs> Don't pass out. All right, right, before I have one of, one of those moments. I love great it. time. Great time. Well deserved. And guys, you guys saw we are, thanks to Intrepid Travel, she's getting a $5,000 voucher to go anywhere in the world. I can't believe it. Do you know it. where you want to go? Oh my gosh, I've got ideas. I want to okay. go, well, I know i got to go to Pittsburgh, but I don't want to use that for that. And I she's never to been to a game before, never, a uh, NFL never. game. Wait so you're going to have a lot of firsts. Yeah, I'm so thinking, keep us posted. I think, yeah, someplace in Europe maybe. I love it. I love mm. it. Well, guys, this is a special moment for me to mom, come here, and my brother Pace. Oh, a, oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Hi, mom. Hi, babe. Best. I have to tell you, I've been doing this for what, like 23 years. Yeah. yeah. She's, you've never really been with me on a shoot, other than the Mother's Day thing. Oh, that's right. Oh, how can you so you can say hi to Craig and Jill and Vicky. <laughs> oh my hi, goodness. Hi. hi. Good, Good to late. see you again, Miss Sheila. Stop <laughs> looking at you. Oh. She's looking at herself on the monitor. Sure. I stop looking at the monitor. Okay. You guys she, have any questions? Ask, yeah. ask mom. Yes. Ask Sheila. It's good to see you again. <laughs> and my mom no says hello, right Sheila. Hi, Sheila, what's it yeah, like seeing hi, your little Betty girl Joe in action? Betty Jo, oh, I remember. Yes. Did you yes. hear your question? No. What's it like <laughs> watching no. me do all oh, the best? Oh, I love it. And we just coincidentally both had on orange, okay? But it's been wonderful with Pace. We're 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 having a great time. Great time. Sheila, you Chanel, should come on more often. Can you tell that she's a drama teacher? She <laughs> should come on more often, Chanel. Yeah, Sheila is well, on her you know own what? show. Here's the deal. We're honoring. 
She is. We are honoring teachers today and the great teachers at Northeast Magna High School and teachers all around this country. My mom yes. uh, was a teacher. My grandmother was a teacher. And Shay, some I think people. Okay, mom. Here. Yep, some of my mom's former students are here. <laughs> so, okay, mom, now I talk about Shay now. You know, just so, here's the, the thing. To bring it full circle. Yes. I know. To bring it full circle, guys, here's the thing. I think the reason why that video resonated with so many people, mom, I'm talking. Oh. Um, I think the reason why that video resonated with so many people is because we've all had a teacher who changed our life, yes. who believed in us, yeah. and they saw how thankful you were. And it's not easy to connect with high school students, and they yeah. really adore you. So let's give it up one more time for Mrs. Papa. There you go. And if you have a, if you have a teacher who has changed your life, let her know. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. Oh, Chanel, thank you. Sheila. <laughs> Sheila, thank you. Peace. Cordell, Ms. Papa. Thank you. Wichita, Kansas, that's a special place. I know. I know. Thanks, Chanel. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks, Faith. Do you have a teacher who changed your life? I, oh, gosh, a couple. A couple. Mr. Brandon, Mr. Mm -hmm. Fanning comes yeah. to mind. How about you guys? Mr. Crawford, my fifth grade teacher. Ms. McCallis, my sixth grade teacher. Really, uh, so many teachers touched me at so many points in my life. And it, I'm so glad we have a whole week to appreciate yeah. them. But really, we should be doing it every day. Yeah. Yep. My mama, yeah, Spanish and French oh, teacher. My gosh. So I'll, I'll throw hey, it to mom. Wow. Coming up in our series, The Upside, our celebration of teachers continues. I found out what inspired an important mission to bring more diversity into the classroom. First though, Consumer Confidential, a warning about scams that are on the rise, and we're going to tell you how you can protect yourself as well. Third hour of today, right back after this. Morning in our Consumer Confidential, how to protect ourselves from some of the latest scams, both high tech and old fashioned as well. Uh, so Vicky is putting on her senior consumer investigative <laughs> correspondent hat back for this segment. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, it seems like every day we hear something new about AI, so I guess we shouldn't be surprised that now AI is, is being used for scams. Yeah, the criminals are really capitalizing on artificial intelligence. And one way they're doing it is through voice cloning. It's remarkable. You, your voice, which is on television all the time, the technology is out there, Craig, for someone to capture it with a computer and use all the bits and pieces of everything that you've said to make their own sentences. And so many of us are on social media too. So it's not just somebody who's on television. You put your voice out there probably in many social That's media creepy. voice. So the so. big scam they're warning about right now that emergency call, right? Craig, it's Bobby. I'm in jail. I'm in the hospital. I need money. Help me out. The red flag is the urgency and the ask for cash. Anytime you get a call like that from anybody who claims to be a friend or family member, pause. I mean, it might be legitimate, but 99.9% I was going to say, it depends on the friend or family member. <laughs> I was say, my family and friend group, it's a possibility. <laughs> it's a possibility. But here's what you should do. Call that person back. Make sure it really is them. You can't even trust caller ID these days because they can spoof a phone number and make it look like it's coming from a number that you recognize. The AARP has a bonus tip here, too. Have a code word for your family. So you can be like, hey, what's the code word? Right. And if they don't tell you, Jill, then you know, hey, this person is not in my inner circle. Yeah, because I can only imagine a parent getting a call, oh. pretending that it's a oh, child, saying, we need money, parents. we have your... Mm -hmm. I mean, right, how That's scary exactly is that? Right. All right, and you're also warning about a different kind of AI scam. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us are curious about artificial intelligence. You're probably seeing ads popping up in your social media, or you're getting emails, hey, click on this link, click on that link, check it out. Well, as you know, you should never click on a link that is sent to you via text or email that you didn't actively search for. If you do want to search for something, 
go on Google, type it in yourself, make sure there are no misspellings in the URL, and scroll past the sponsored ads because these scammers are smart. They're hoping you're going to click on a link and it's going to download some sort of malware on your phone or your computer that gives them a backdoor into your information when you're typing in banking information on your on your computer. That That's what happens my dad every few years. My computer doesn't work anymore. Well, have you been clicking on links? Right. That's probably causing your computer to freeze up. So make sure you go directly to a website if you want to search for anything, including artificial intelligence. Tax deadline just passed a few weeks ago. Apparently that doesn't mean that the tax scammers are finished. Not at all. In fact, they're in high effect right now. The IRS has so many scams. They've actually posted the dirty dozen on irs.gov. One of the most common ones will always be scammers impersonating the government saying, hey, we're calling you or we're emailing you saying your refund is due or you owe more money and yeah. we need information from you. And if you don't, we're going to arrest you or we're going to stop your social security payments, cancel your social security number. Don't fall for any of that. Another common scam this time of year is saying we can help you track your refund. We just need to set up your account for you and they're going to ask you for your social security oh. number and other personal information. You can set up your own account on IRS and track your own refund. It's very easy to do at IRS.gov. And the last thing you want to remember, the IRS is not going to email you. They're not going to call no. you. If there is a problem with your tax paperwork, they're going to send you something snail mail. All right, before we let you go, going um, old school here, what is check washing? Okay, this is on the rise. Check fraud is on the rise. Even though a lot more of us are doing online bill pay, the Treasury Department says they're getting so many more reports of check fraud. And what's happening is criminals are saying, you know, the little flag you put up on your mailbox? Yeah. That's a sign to them, hey, there might be something in there worth stealing. They take that paper check, they use a chemical like a nail polish remover, wash it clean of the ink that you use, wow. and rewrite that check to themselves. And here's the other thing, those blue mailboxes are also targets. So you wanna make sure you are always going directly into the post office or not putting the flag up when you have to mail something. Never try to mail something overnight because it's just sitting there for a criminal to fish out of sure. the mailbox. Um, and those are the things you can do to really protect yourself. And always check your banking account to make sure the check that goes to Jill Martin actually was cashed by Jill Martin. I mean, people write checks in order to protect themselves right. from online, and now you're exactly. saying it's exhausting. I know. And there are actually pens you can use now that um, are, they resist that kind of check washing liquid. So that's something to invest into if you write a lot of really important. Checks. Great tips. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. This morning, we are celebrating Teacher Appreciation Day with our series, The Upside. So, there's a program down in New Orleans, and its aim is pretty simple. They're trying to bring more diversity and perspective to the classroom by empowering a new generation of educators to stand at the head of the class, to shape young minds. To which ways African Americans use World War II crisis in order to protest against racial discrimination in America. Teaching, more than a career, it's a calling, especially for Jerome Perkins. So you just woke up one morning and you're like, you know what? Guy was like, you need to be a teacher. He called you to it. Yes, sir. Jerome teaches African American history at Sophie B. Wright High School in New Orleans. When you finally got into the classroom, do you remember what those what those few days and those first few weeks were like? I was scared. <laughs> Just like anything, it's new to me, so I didn't really know what they expect. And I I just didn't want to be bad at it. I just didn't want to be a bad teacher. 
Jerome and dozens of educators like him got their start with the help of a fellowship called Brothers Empowered to Teach. The goal is to get more black teachers, specifically male black teachers, in the classroom. The most recent survey shows that black males only account for 1.3% of all public school teachers. Larry Irvin is trying to change that. He co-founded Brothers Empower to Teach in 2014. It's a community-based education program for undergraduate college students. Fellows get funding and support. More importantly, they get real classroom experience. Larry's late mother was a teacher. He spent a lot of time in school with her growing up. But as a young man, Larry says his life went down a troubled path with two arrests leading to charges of drug possession and evading police. Larry pled guilty both times and received probation. He turned things around, and after getting the blessing of the school superintendent, he started coaching at his old high school. It just took off. That was a spark. Um, my connection with the, with, with, the, with the young guys, the head coach was like, Larry, have you ever thought about education? Like, Because you would be an incredible uh, teacher. Then he started teaching, but he also began studying. He wanted to understand why there are so few black men who become teachers. Why is it so important to have men that look like me and you in the front of a classroom? Kids are what they see. I don't have to go far to see somebody uh, that looks like me playing football. I have to go far to see a rapper. I can go right out my door and see a drug dealer. Education, being a teacher, leading from the classroom and from an intellectual standpoint, that's a different conversation. Since launching, the program has placed 174 fellows. Right now, they're in New Orleans, in Baton Rouge, with hopes for expansion. Part of the program is nurturing a network. Larry hosts a series of conversations among the fellows called The Cypher. We think it, we think it from, from a collective black male standpoint, how we're viewed as a group. It's a chance for these young educators to exchange ideas, support one another, and grow. It's working for new teachers like Jerome. It's what you perceive and what you see every day. If I see this every day, that's what I'm stuck to. And for Larry, becoming the change you want to see is a lesson he was taught long ago by his first teacher, his mom. What, what do you think your mother would say about all of this? You got me with that one. She would be quite proud, I would imagine. She was my biggest cheerleader, you know, so. It was like he did it, he turned it around. To say the least. You did. To say the least. What yeah. an incredible his, story. His mom would be quite, quite proud. Um, and here's the thing, y'all. It's, it's working down yeah, there right? in, New, in New Orleans. Uh, program really taking root. Larry says that about 75% of fellows stay in teaching three years or more after they graduate. So not surprisingly, they're, they're trying to take it to more cities now. Yeah, you want to recruit teachers. You want to retain teachers. Yes. And that idea, if you see it, you can be it. It is absolutely true. He did say something that stayed with me. You know, I think oftentimes people think that people don't go into teaching because of the money, because of the, no. because of the pay. No, so he said have role models, right? folks, folks who go into it understand that you're not going to get rich doing it. They're called to do it. They see it as a form of public service. So... And you can clearly tell in that story yeah. that that's why he's there. Amazing. Thank you.
We just got to save it for the camera, yes, Craig. Yes. We have a good answer. Our next guest has been educating and entertaining all of us for decades. Bill Nye made science cool for generations of students on that hit show, Bill Nye, the Science Guy. Now Bill's latest series, The End is Nye, teaches us how science can save us from some global disasters. The most hazardous thing a volcano can unleash. It's incinerating everything in its path. Cities within 500 miles of the caldera will be buried or burned to the ground within hours. Volcano night. It's a blast. <laughs> Such a well done show. Bill, that show is incredible. It, you, it ends kind of apocalyptic each time with you, and then there's a retrack of like, okay, we could have avoided this. Love that. That's right. By the way, the world's ending, but then we could save the world with science. Science. Yeah. Science. <laughs> science. And speaking of science, happy birthday. This is 30 years of Bill Nye, the science guy. It wow, will that's be. incredible. Three decades of teaching us about how the world works, facts. Um, what are people saying to you when they come up to you? What do you hope the legacy of this show will be? Well, the legacy, ideally, we would, dare I say it, <laughs> say change it. the world. <laughs> Clean water, renewable electricity, access to the Internet for everybody in the world. Raise the standard of living of women and girls for a better tomorrow for all humankind. Let's go. That would be the legacy of the show. A high bar to be sure. It's a television show made in a warehouse 30 years ago. With a couple dozen people. Yeah. But it has changed a lot of lives. Oh, man. So people come up to me. The reason I became a physician, the reason I'm a geologist, oh. the reason yeah. it's amazing. No, it's overwhelming. Years. I try to get it, but it's it's amazing. It's, it's whelming. So tell us more about the Peacock Show. Yes. So some strange human nature thing. You would think, I don't know if you heard about this, we had a pandemic. We did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Kind of blocked it out. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, you would think that when there's all this trauma in your life, you would watch romantic comedies. It would be Ted Lasso all the time right. or something. But uh, that's not what people did. They were rented contagion. I want more. I want more disaster. How else can the world kill me? And so we made uh, six half-hour disaster movies with the Bill Nye thing, the optimistic view of the future with... Science! Yes! Good job, Greg. Yes. So, Thank you for carrying so, uh, us. Uh, that's what that's what we did, and we had really, you know, we were in a, a big studio in Montreal, and we had this great crew. We had this really terrific digital artists that create these crazy. When you're gonna have uh, apocalyptic disasters, yeah. you can't beat digital effects. No, you cannot. Right. Um, be before we get, we get into this demonstration, the bow ties. I mean, they have become. Uh, it they become your signature. I mean, thing. I love them. I mean, every time I see them, I'm like, ah, oh, I'd love that. So when you go, where do you go? Do you go to the Emmys? Um, if it's a good year. And you, you wear a tuxedo. Uh, yes, sir. And then what happens? You wear a... I, I wear a bow tie. Yeah, you do. How many of those do you think you have? <laughs> I have about 500. Whoa. 500? <laughs> they don't wear out, people. 500. You have to tie them a lot. How do you organize them? By so, color? Yes. Okay. Mike, yeah, want, Mike's going to bring this in because we've got a yeah. tradition here on the third hour. Our co-host, Dylan Dry, she usually explains the science behind the changing of the seasons by using all kinds yeah, of props. But, yeah, that was uh, there. Oh, he had a, uh, the, we had a ping pong eggs. ball and an orange. Yeah. We had a meatball and an orange. We had a basketball and a softball. Yeah. Yes. So you're going to continue the tradition even though Dylan's off today. Yeah. That's well, what they told Equinox was a while ago. So this is a demonstration we did on the old show, uh, the Science Guy show, many years ago. So the reason we have seasons uh -huh. is because the Earth's axis is tilted with respect to the sun. Like you're the sun, okay. the Jeez. Earth's axis stays the How same as we orbit the sun. And this produces this remarkable effect where we have seasons. So if the sun is, uh, if we had lights bright enough in here to make this work, Nothing else would be visible. So we have to uh, use this flashlight. Okay. Whoa, look out. So if the flashlight's uh, oh. hitting the southern hemisphere, whoa, okay. we're still overwhelming it, you guys. We're over, we're over, we're saturating the video. Uh, if the sun's hitting the southern hemisphere, it's bright enough to turn the happy little motor, whoa, steady, with the solar panel. If the sun, as we, gone, as we went around the sun and the other axis is uh, uh, closer to the sun, yeah. then the uh, northern hemisphere gets more light. Now, under ideal conditions, we'd have a light bright enough to hit the whole thing, but you see how it's saturating the camera even now. Yeah, so anyway, but... uh, science teachers out there, I recommend this. These things are very inexpensive. They're attached with, dare I say it, 
science. Hot, hot melt glue. Oh. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, anyway, uh, yes, uh, you asked what the legacy of the show would be. It would be great if we had, let's say, wind and solar, geothermal to run mm. our world, and... Uh, base load from fusion power. Yes, well, fusion. I, you can't be serious. This was sure. such a delight to geek out with you. Thank I, you. I have Thank to you tell you. Yes. Thank Look you at so that much, close Bill. up. That's there beautiful. It is. Craig's wow. doing it. Science, Craig. Science. All right, the end is now. You streaming oh, yeah. now on Peacock. That is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. All Turn right. it up loud, everybody. <laughs> and up next, from real science to sci fi, Rebecca Ferguson is here <laughs> to tell us about her epic new series set deep beneath the Earth's surface. Bill Nye's very into it. And then later, show mom you love her in the kitchen how to make some delicious Mother's Day stuffed shells. We'll be right back. Sunshine. How you doing? Science. Yes. Science. Science. Doing it, Craig. This is so much fun. This is so much so bad at science. This morning, we are catching up with an actor who has starred in some blockbusters. Rebecca Ferguson played Ilsa Faust in the Mission Impossible franchise along that guy named Tom Cruise. <laughs> Never heard of him. Who? <laughs> well, she went on to star in hits like The Greatest Showman and the futuristic film Dune. And now Rebecca is back with a new dystopian well, series people. called Silo about the last 10,000 people on mm -hmm. Earth all living deep underground. Her character, Juliet, is searching for answers about a loved one's murder. Take a look. What is that? I don't know, I found it with George's stuff. You brought a relic into my workshop? You love finding out how things work. I also like not dying. I wouldn't send you out to clean. The only way you'll get out of this place is feet first. Thanks. Anyway, if you get a minute, can you try and figure out what it is? Sure. Mm. So it's a romantic comedy. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's happy and actually it's basically science. That's <laughs> science! We were just talking yeah. about how, how... I mean, it's so relatable, the mm. fact that he talked about light and the Real thing, night. and I thought, yeah, we had none of that. Um, because it's in a silo, mm -hmm. so it was completely dark. And then I also like the fact that he said, when the world is in chaos, we don't search ourselves to comedy and to, to humor. We mm -hmm. actually want to kind of go deeper go into it. And I went, that's great. So let's try season two one day, <laughs> you know? So tell us about this role, because we just got a sneak peek. Juliet, she's phenomenal. She is a fiercely intelligent mechanic. She is just riddled with, it's a daytime show, so I'm trying to make it a bit light and happy. <laughs> She's riddled with the trauma. Um, and she uh, is put in a situation where a loved one of her dies and she wants to figure out the truth, mm. but gradually unravels one secret after another and we realize that we're literally living in a suppressed police state where lie upon lie has segmented our reality. Oh, so good. Um, I was just looking at some of the <laughs> clips there. Yeah. That's a heck of a cast. I saw, I think I saw David Ale Ale the Yellow, Ale yeah. yeah. I saw him there. Tim Robbins is in yeah. this. Rashida Jones yeah. is in it. Yeah. I mean, it's quite the common. Quite the commons in it. Yeah. What was it like working with, with all those folks? I mean, and the group chat has got to be epic. Oh, you've heard about the group chat. <laughs> I heard about the group chat. 
the question is who's not a part of the group chat. Oh. No, it actually started with uh, the mechanical group, so the down deepers just to kind of get a good vibe on set okay. and we're very sort of familiar. And then gradually, you know, we kind of liked other actors, so they were allowed in as well. And then, but we're very clear that everyone is not allowed, like the writers and the producers, but then I realized that I'm a producer. So gradually it's becoming Expanded. the biggest group ever. What are the kinds love. of things you, how I have in your group It's chat. just mimics and gifts. And, oh, uh, you're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> you're right? just yeah. like us. If I could communicate only in gifts, yeah. I would. <laughs> Much easier. And yeah. emojis, right? So, Rebecca, this show, my husband loves it. He loved the book series that it was based on. Yeah. We just started watching it this weekend. It's so realistic, so well done. I actually feel claustrophobic watching because I think about living what? in a silo with no light and not being able to go outside. Yeah. If you were in a position, apocalyptic, do you ever think about that kind of end of days and like, what what did you learn from this role that you might take with you if we ever get there? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, where's the science guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, it started, one thing is shooting, right? So you, we, we read the script. I loved it because it was energetic and it was cool and it asked me to be in good shape and it was the philosophy of mind of people being born good and society tames you mm -hmm. or are you born evil and society or the opposite right, right? Yeah. So there's so much philosophy behind it but it's until I do the interviews where these questions come and it's like comparing to today's society and what if you were stuck in it right so we've had all of these thoughts and it was like, what would you do? Where would you live? Like, who would you be? Up top has it easy. Right. It's hierarchical settings, right? But would you enjoy it? Or would you rather have a purpose mm -hmm. in a sense that she is mechanical? Right. And she needs to focus and a drive every day because you'd go mental. Right. Well, Rebecca, thank but, you. And before we let you go, I just want to bring up Mission Impossible Part 1 coming out. But I want to go back to the time that Tom Cruise noticed you oh. and uh, that guy, oh, sorry. Yeah. that guy, Tom yeah. Cruise, yeah. he noticed you and that's how you got your initial role. Was that a phone call? Tell us how that went down. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was. It was, a, well, it was actually a phone call to someone else who then related to someone else who then became the AD who ran up to me and I was on a camel in the desert. And they said, Tom Cruise wants to meet you for mission. And I went, <laughs> You were in it on a camel just in your own life. No, no, I was oh. shooting something. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But that sounds <laughs> that so sense. much okay. cooler. Wait. It's on a camel. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, they said, Tom wants to meet you for mission. I remember thinking, yeah, of course. <laughs> Bring him here. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, cool. an hour later cool. I was meeting him. And it happened. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. You're thank a delight. You and Silo is now streaming on Apple TV Plus with new episodes every Friday. When we come back, why not cook for mom, perhaps on this Mother's Day? Yeah. We're going to whip up a meal. They get this. Costs less than 20 bucks. And your kids can even help prep it. Third hour of today, right back after this. You can eat with us. That show. That was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> This morning in our Today Table series, a Mother's Day meal for under 20 bucks, folks. Joining us now, author, founder of 
fit cook meals, <laughs> Kevin Curry is here. You can scan that QR code at home to get all the ingredients. You can shop along. Always good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. What are we making this morning? We're cooking up something special for Mama. This is a budget. Oh, and just go ahead and tell the people. It's it's amazing. Tell the people. It's it delicious. Amazing. There's no meat in it, <laughs> and it's easy, and it takes you back to your childhood. Okay, go. Absolutely. Yummy. So we're gonna start out with some portobello mushroom caps, and the most important thing here is you gotta gill it because if you don't gill it, it's oh. gonna end up being like being like really black. Right. No. And then after that, you're gonna dice it up. Looks like this. Okay. You can also, as a swap, just buy some chopped up mushrooms as sure. well. In goes the mushrooms, a little bit of onion. Okay. I'm gonna add a sprinkle of salt just to, br just to bring the sweetness, the sweetness of it, and then garlic. some garlic. Yes. Boom. Oh, I taste it. Saute this going up. I Boom. Have so many questions about cooking with All right. kale. So what were, what no. were we doing here? We're now, breaking this is the kale, but don't do it like that. You're oh, doing this, 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 you know, the long way. You do okay. like this. You strip it. Oh. Look at that. See. And then you. Ooh. Oh, oh, there oh, you go. Oh, you it's coming oh, right out. On. I'm a pro. And then Ooh. just tear it into pieces right into this bowl. Look at you. You're like a kale yeah, champion. Keep going. Like kale assassin. We should have had you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get go that. Ahead. Get that. That kale. Why do you like the dinosaur kale for this, Kev? Dino kale has a really good flavor, and also it doesn't wilt down and get slimy, kind of like spinach maybe. Okay. Wait. So do you eat these? No, you cook no, these no, down. No, no, you take no. this out and I then take just those out. And you can okay. use them for fertilizer or something like that in your yard for if you want to. Yeah. All right, now let's make the sauce. Okay. This up. So this is I'll some skim over cotta, mm. and we're gonna have some store bought pesto. Go ahead and put that in. Okay. There. Some easy, store bought easy. pesto. You're gonna add in your kale, which has been steaming here. It's gonna get down to this. Okay. Right now, here. How long do you cook that for? The kids can help with this part. This entire thing. You're gonna cook this down for about three or four minutes until okay. it gets really soft. Okay. That's that's really there. good. Isn't it? Isn't There's it? No meat in this thing. It tastes like it almost has meat. Oh wait, wait, wait. Put in the rest of it. Oh, and mushrooms. The kale. Right? All of it. The mushroom. Yes, the kale, the mushrooms, and this is some thyme and some oregano. Yeah, this Mix this together up. very well. Okay. Now. If you have a piping bag, you can add this stuffing to a piping bag or just okay. use a oops. Ziploc bag. Do I just squirt yep. it in there? Ziploc or spoon. Oh, that's good. Oh, oh that's good. Thank I see you. Thank you okay. Don't pull this one out. I'm not going I'm not there. I'm a little excited. So, yeah, kids can help. I'm a little Mama excited about that one. All right, everybody, let's move on from that part. And then what? <laughs> and then you're going to add some marinara to the so bottom of this dish. Yeah. You're going to add some marinara to the bottom. Okay. And then oh just God. put our stuffed shells right on top. There and then go. a little bit more drizzle of some marinara. Boom. Top it off with some mozzarella cheese. You're going to bake this in the oven, y'all. And mm -hmm. look, it comes out to this. Let me tell you something. This one's Isn't it How long do you bake it? Okay. Just roughly. Um, it's about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, That's really good. But guess what? This entire meal is under 20 bucks for all the ingredients. And meatless. And meatless. And nostalgic. Recipe, and, and delicious. And, yes. So good. Tastes like lasagna. Thank you. Kevin, delicious. thank you. Again, mm. you can buy the ingredients for the recipe by scanning that QR code or you can also go to today.com slash today table. We should mention today earns a commission from the purchases. Kevin's going to be back tomorrow in the 8 o'clock hour. Mm, yes, do you know what we're making yet? Yes, we're making a salmon nichoa sheet pan. Ooh, yummy. Oh, we're going to do it tomorrow. Really good. We'll be right back. <laughs> I love that we got the best up. <laughs> Joe, thank you. Thanks thank for pitching you. in and yeah. helping out. Well, fun. Tomorrow here on the third hour of today, actor Jody Sweeten will join us live in studio. And coming up on Hoda and Jenna, actor and director, director Emilio Estevez stops by. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Al. Good luck today.
it is Teacher Appreciation Day. Donna is live in Dallas, surprising a beloved educator who's changing kids' lives. Plus, actor Emilio Estevez takes us back to his passion project after more than a decade. And we're talking about Bama Rush, a new documentary inspired by a TikTok phenomenon that has everyone buzzing. We've got a sneak peek. So it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. It's a special no, day. No, it's not. It's not. It's, that's tomorrow. Today is Henry's 45th birthday. Wait, wait. Tomorrow is our anniversary. But today is Henry's birthday? Tomorrow is Henry's 45th birthday. Wait, today? Today is his birthday. And tomorrow's and your tomorrow anniversary? tomorrow's anniversary. Boy, that's, do you just do one present? What do you do? Yeah, yeah, we I mean usually one and then uh -huh. Sunday is Mother's Day. And it's been oh like that for 15 gosh. years. Oh my gosh. So how do you break it up? Does he not get a real birthday? No, he gets a real birthday. I know yeah. people are like why did you choose it that way? Yeah. But it was just the way the cookies crumbled. That's the way it works. You don't so, always get to choose everything. You know what? Sometimes you just got to do it. You so, got to do it. So today's so his birthday. So what are you all going to do? Um, I think we're going to order in um, Chinese food, which okay, is what he asked that. for. Kung Pao chicken. Kung Pao. Kung Pao chicken. I love that. Um, I love that I just said it wrong. Typical. <laughs> and... You just said poo. That's the only reason I corrected you. <laughs> I would have let it go. <laughs> Why do you have to poo poo me? <laughs> First of all, I love a poo poo platter. I do too. That's a real thing. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and so anyway, that's it. We're getting him an ice cream cake. He loves an ice cream cake. Not much is happening, even though 45 is sort of a big round it's number. It's kind of a big round number for him. How's he feel about it, you think? He feels good. Yeah. He's he in a good place. He actually took the, I mean, I hope his boss. Oh, wait. Never mind. <laughs> he went mountain biking. Oh, he yeah, did? Yeah, yes. So anyway. <gasps> That's really All good. Right, should we go on to this very interesting job interviewing story? Yeah. Okay, so this is that time, by the way, where a lot of students are looking for the yes. right job. And interviewing can be, it can make you nervous, scared, yes. anxiety. How am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to be and like? As, as you were saying, and we want to hear, but like mm -hmm. sometimes there's rounds and rounds yeah. and rounds. Yeah, but anyway, there's this great story yeah. that's going viral. This is good. Um, we think. Here's what happened, okay? The candidate blew the interview, excuse, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> blew the interview within the first five minutes. So what happened was he walks in to a job interview. I'm sure he's dressed to the nines. He's yeah. ready. He's probably figuring out how am I going to do it? What am I going to be like? Ba, 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 ba. And he walks up to the receptionist or who he thinks is the receptionist. Yes. And apparently he's dismissive. Kind of rude. I have a, I have a job interview. Dismissive, ba, 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 like, ba, ba. Now I'm Let's seeing go. this person. I'm here. I, I'm a, me. This receptionist was actually not a receptionist. They had planted the recruiter, the hiring supervisor in that role. And it so was they actually could see, a test. Yes, how this person would react to someone who we thought could not help him. Yeah, well, just it's people in different position, uh -huh. positions, which is so fascinating. <gasps> And he Don't you feel like... And wait, he did not get it because he was rude yes. to her and she was the one doing the hiring. Right away. She was like, bye. Yeah. Bye. If you're going to be rude to this person, then I don't want you on our team. I mean, that to me is genius. Mm. By the because way, that's... how hard. anybody treats yeah. anybody is how they're going to treat everybody. I mean, you know, people know that from who they go out on a date. It's well, like, you it. know, in five seconds, okay, this person. There is nothing more that is a turnoff than somebody that is rude to a, to a waiter, to a t uh, Uber driver, a taxi driver. Get me. Get me. Get me this. Yuck. Yuck and yuck, yuck. and yuck. Get me. I don't like I it. also don't like when people don't look somebody in the eye. I know. Turn around. I think some people have trouble doing that. I know, but I, I'm sorry. That bothers me. I know. Because it, it it's, not, it's yeah. a learned. I know. Learn it. I know. It's hard. I know. I agree with you. I mean, I feel like that there is something about being present. I also think you can be too casual on a job interview. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. hey, I'm just, ha you know, there's that yes. kind of weird vibe. Yes. It's like be formal a little bit. Yes. Because don't think that your easy yes. breeziness yes. is, it comes off as almost not respecting the job. I mean, I was just yeah. part of something like yeah. that. And I felt like, stop 
putting your leg up like this. <laughs> yes. Don't and, say yes. like every other word. Right. You know, try, try to, to be, be right, present, respectful of. And I also think what you wear, because sometimes they're like, what do I wear on the job yeah. interview? It's like anything. You respect where you're going. You yes. know, that's don't what you're. Don't wear flip flops. No. That's where no. you sort of put on your blazer. Yeah, you gotta wear your blazer. You gotta wear your blazer. You got to. Um, and you then, got to. okay, so when I've gotten to meet people, yeah. what do you look my for? My biggest. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this. I feel like enthusiasm have gotten a, has gotten a really bad rap from sort of cynical people around. Yes, yes, yes. You know, like, oh, if you're really into something, maybe that means you're not cool. Yeah. Guess what? It doesn't mean that. Yeah. It means you're interested, you're curious, you're engaged. I feel like and I look for somebody that's enthusiastic mm -hmm. about whatever it is mm -hmm. they want to do. And knows what they want. And knows what they want. Talia, who's now our executive producer, was interviewing for this job, and she basically said... I want this job. Yeah. This is, I know I'll be good at this job. This is my job. This is my dream job. Dream job. My dream job. But that's job. like, God. if you felt, if you were too worried about being cool or being casual, you wouldn't state into the no. universe what it is you actually want. Right. And in fact, you would try to be coy, like, well, I have other interviews, yeah. so we'll just see if this works yeah. out. Thinking that people like the thing they can't have, yes. which is the case sometimes. Well, especially with dating. But yes. guess what? I think dating and some and, and hiring somebody yeah, yeah. are actually similar. kind of well, similar and kind of different. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Huh. We want to bring somebody on board that believes in what we're doing. Yes. So it's okay it. from the beginning to say, I'm into this. Yes, I like I it. I like what y'all do. Yes, I want to be part yeah, of this. Like I totally that's, agree. That's what you want. I totally agree. I think that's, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right on point. That's right on point. So that's why we have Talia. See how lucky we are? We're the luckiest. Say what you want. Put it, you know what I started doing? Oh, no. Is this yeah. your fad? No, it's not a fad. <laughs> Hoda goes through fads. Go no, ahead. But this is all about, you know, a lot of people meditate. Yes. You meditate. Yes. I meditate. And at first, I didn't think I could ever do it because it seems like you just sit there and what's happening. But then you realize that it actually does empty your mind out. And, and it's actually mind. true because both of our brains are kind of Yes. In hyper gear. You need hyper to Hyper gear. You need so to the calm fact that if you and I can do it, anybody can do it. We talk about manifesting, right? But think about it this way. Okay, let's pretend. What's something we want to manifest right now? Our studio. Okay. 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 So we want to manifest our studio. Hi, Kelly Clarkson. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Okay. We could split However, it. there's Why don't room we for all it? of us. But let's, okay. this is what we're going to do. Okay. Okay, manifest. Think about what it would be like. Someone just told you, hey, Jen and Hoda, you got the studio. Now feel your brain receiving that. What does your body feel like? Oh my God, we got it. Like to really Excited. In, feel the, in, see what's going on yeah, in your body. I feel it. Because your brain can be told anything. And you like some people have negative thoughts all the time. Yeah. Nothing's happening in their world. They're being dragged and down. They're feeling sad. Sad. Okay. So the uh, the opposite can happen. Okay. With your brain. Okay. So we are manifesting, not just saying we want it. You have to let your brain believe it and let your body feel the feelings of when. Someone walks, uh, Libby walks up to us and says, Hoda, oh, Jenna, Libby. guess what? I like that you're getting specific. Yes. Wow. Libby says, you know what, guys? Okay. Good news. Wait, feel it. In okay. your, I feel your body. It. In there. The studio's ours. We're going to start in two weeks. What? Two <gasps> weeks? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? That It's more than manifesting. It's putting it in your brain, in and your body. It to Whatever your thing is. If you're going through an illness and you want to be, it's like, you know, try to put that stuff in your system yeah. because who knows? It and can't also, hurt. what's the worst that can Nothing. happen? You feel good yeah, and you excited feel good. for a minute? We're going to get it. Oh, good. We are. We're not just manifesting. We're going one further than that. Wow, right. Hoda, I don't know what, what you ate for breakfast, but I'm We're into in. it. All right, All ready? Right. It's Let's time for our can't, can't wait, wait for, for that. that. Okay. All right, this is a new documentary that's coming out later this month. It's called Bama Rush, and mm -hmm. it follows a group of young women as they go through the sorority rushing process at Alabama University. Let's take a look. The University of Alabama is the top sorority recruitment in all of the country. Rush consists of four highly competitive rounds. Let's be honest, I probably would not be going to Alabama if it did not blow up on TikTok. I'm nervous. Which is like nervous and excited. You have to know how to play it. Because Greek life is everything at Alabama. 
Wow. wow. Wow, that's full access right there, too. That's not like, that's everything. Everyone's cooperating. They also taught us a word I didn't know. What was it? Nervited you, or nervi something. Nervous and excited. Nervited? Um, you were a nervited. rush chair. No, I was I was the pledge trainer. Oh, pledge trainer. I was a pledge trainer at Tridel at Virginia Tech. And by the way, the pledges that I took care of were not, they did not see me coming. They did not. When you come into a sorority, you want to go to the Sigma Chi formal. Like, you don't want to yeah. sit around with some pledge trainer who's going to be like, so I used to play dreamy music and read. Wait, I would take them out into like where there was like a forest with like a, a babbling brook and I would read to them Leo Buscaglia's <laughs> Living, Loving and Learning. And I'd be like, you all listen to it. No, I want you to listen. This is important for your life. And I would read them passages from this book and they were like, Whoa, <laughs> woof. What is this? And how is she our pledge trainer? But I love, you know what? I love them. Yes. And I wanted it to be like, of course you're going to do all the fun stuff. But there's part, like, we're learning about life and it's cool. I love that it was that cool. You took what, she, like, normally is like, you know, could can be slightly hazy. Yeah. And you made yeah. it like, peaceful I did. contrast. I did. I, I loved it. I bet you even told them last time, <laughs> let's manifest. <laughs> In our mind, what it feels like to walk into that party. You're what weird. do you feel it? Do you feel it in your body? But you do feel the studio, don't you? I, 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 I don't know what you ate, but I like it. All right, coming up, you guys, our knock knock surprise. Okay, in honor of Teacher Appreciation Week, Donna is about to spread some very special oh. love to a very Whoa. special teacher. Look! Awesome. I love it. Can't wait to love surprise it. her. That's a party. Donna, stand by. We are going to come back, and we are going to talk with you coming up, right? <laughs> right after this. time when we try to help our viewers by doling out <laughs> our best advice. Yes, we've got Hoda and Jenna's social dilemmas. Okay. Okay, first Here's one. the first one. It's, right. it's Mother's Day themed. For mm -hmm. Mother's Day this year, my brother is hosting a brunch for our mom. I want to stay, and oh, this is a hard one. I want to stay home, relax with my own kids and my husband. I can make my own plans to see my mom. What are your thoughts? I, you know what? I think you got to go to the brunch. I, I don't. We're gonna have, we're gonna, this is what I wanna say. If the, if the brother's hosting a brunch for the mom, she has kids, she wants to be there, I think you can call your bro, if you have a good relationship, and say, hey, I'm gonna, my husband planned a little something for me, or my kids planned a brunch for me, I'm gonna take mom to dinner on Tuesday. Okay, here's what I think. I think that, how many hours are in a day, 24? Okay, so we got the brunch. Well, you sleep for 12 Well, hours. okay. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a good life. Okay, so, so um, here's the brunch. Eight. Here's the, here's the brunch that the brother has already organized, because what a nice brother he is. There are, 
Oh, wait, why don't I have breakfast with mom? Hey, why don't I have lunch or dinner? I would do my own thing around that brunch because I keep thinking for the whole family to be together. That's true. I mean, you know, I break it down. How many of, of brunches are you, you going to get? So it's one brunch. You can you can have dinner with your own kids or even right after brunch, you can leave immediately. Yeah, but also, you know what? Roll with it. Do what you want. Do what you want. All right, here's another one. My in-laws have a beach house with summer approaching. It'd be nice to stay there. They never seem to ask my family, but they do have room for other siblings. Do we invite ourselves? Her in-laws. No, they it's don't. It's her in-laws. They don't invite you ever. But they invite the other siblings? Message. You're not invited because, no, you wait for the, hey, can we come? God, no. Hoda is just be, Hoda wait, is wait, just telling you, the truth what, what today. What do you think? You think you just say, think, can we please come and stay I at your beach? I think if she has a good relationship with their in-laws, like I, I, I've yeah, said to my parents, and I know they like some time without us, but I'm always can like, can, can we come and visit this week? And they don't invite oh. me. I'm not sitting around oh, on the couch yeah. twiddling well, my thumbs no, for no, them no, to invite me. No, 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 but that I get, but it sounds like they want to use it. And oh, without the in-laws? I don't know. That's what it sounds like. Oh, sounds like they want they to want use to it the and they never get out. Oh, we don't have to. Oh, our last one. Here. Go ahead. You do it. Okay. My fiance and I are having a small wedding this summer. It's less than 40 guests and no plus ones. Ooh. My future mother-in-law wants her new boyfriend. Ooh, uh, this is <laughs> a four months to come. We want her there, but we do not want to make an exception. Okay. Girl, you got to make an exception. For the mother-in-law. It's your mother-in-law. Yeah. Hey, you can't bring your boyfriend. That's a good way to start. No, you got it. You got Although it. Although I no, will you say, I, you know, I had a couple dudes at my my wedding, and they they were my best friend's boyfriends at the time. They ain't in my, their life. They ain't in my life now. So right. I feel like if but you But the don't, mother. No, but she's the mother I know. Of, your bo of your husband. I know. You, it's not like your best friend who just found some guy she's been dating for two months. This That's is true, like, but it's four months. Okay, we don't know. If you have a social <sighs> dilemma that needs solving, tell us about it at hodaandjenna.com and just hit that connect button. Come on, up next. Oh, look who's here. Emilio Estevez on bringing back a passion project and working with his famous father after this. <laughs> Emilio Estevez has been making movies for more than four decades wow. in front of the camera and behind it. But there's something really, really special when you watch Emilio work with his dad, the legendary Martin Sheen. Yeah, now Emilio has some big news about a film he made with his dad more than a decade ago. It's called The Way. It's about a father who goes on a pilgrimage to honor his late son. Let's watch. So how's it going for you out there on the road, Boomer? I'm Tom. You know, isn't Baby Boomer? You got all those horrible signs of that desperate generation taking its final breath, trying to screw the rest of us over one last time. Only thing missing from you, Boomer, is one of those stupid-looking ponytails in a collection of James Taylor songs on your iPod. I like James Taylor, but I don't have an iPod. Oh, no iPod. No iPod. No. no. Wow, is that no. true to form for it your dad? Absolutely true to form. He wouldn't even know what an iPod is <laughs> if he had it in his hand. Like, what is this what thing? Is that what thing? is this thing? Is it true that he device? has a cell phone, but he doesn't really know how to use it? Or then the wear That is absolutely true. Yeah. He, um, 
He had a flip phone up until about a year and a half ago. Oh, he was one of the last holdouts. Yes. yes. But he probably lives in the moment, man. Yeah. We keep saying that. He does. <laughs> and I think that it has sort of preserved his brain yeah. in some ways that the rest of us are so fragmented. And he's just, he always stays on message. And I think that has, a lot of that has to do with the fact that he is, uh, he's just not dialed into technology the way that, that all of us are. That's yeah. good, yeah. Uh, so he's uh, not distracted. Uh-huh. Okay, we're going to talk about this movie because I'm actually obsessed with the Camino yeah. de Santiago, which <laughs> it's based off of. Right. But we want to show this throwback headshot of Emilio Sheen. <laughs> this Oh, was... I'm sorry. So, Who is this man? <laughs> and talk about, the, talk about the story behind this. Yeah. So I initially, when I started out as an actor and, and auditioning, really, because that's really what that headshot was for, was yeah. to be able to use something to get in the door and audition. And, and I didn't get in many doors. Uh, mm-hmm. And I thought that using the name Sheen would help. And so uh, at the time, my dad said, don't make the mistake that I did. Mm-hmm. Don't change your name. Because back in the day, 1958, he changed his name from Ramon Esteves to Martin Sheen because at the time, uh, there was a lot of prejudice against people with the Hispanic name. Yeah. Years later, in 1967, uh, my grandfather, Francisco, to whom I dedicate the movie to, mm. uh, came to see him on Broadway when he was doing The Subject of Roses. He stood outside of the theater and looked up at the marquee and my dad saw him shake his head just oh. in disappointment. Oh. And so he never got over that. And so I think when it was time for me to sort of start making those moves and start, you know, getting out and, and, and doing auditions, he said, man, he said, if I had one thing to do over, he says, I never would have changed my name. Oh. Now, he never did it legally. Yeah. So he's still, you know, he, he on his passport, on his driver's license, it still says Ramon Esteves. But on, yeah. on mm. screen, it's Martin Sheen. However, this is the first movie that he actually has, because he's credited as an executive producer yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. So. As executive producer, it says Ramon Gerard. Oh, oh my that gosh! Is so I bet your grandmother beautiful. somewhere is smiling. Let's talk about this movie. This is your baby. I mean, this was something that was released back in. 2011, 2011. In, okay. in, and we did a national road tour. Yeah. We, we, we did 35 cities over 50 days. We, in fact, we ended here uh, at, at the end of that. So we did our own pilgrimage across America cool. to sell this movie, yeah. which was this sort of grassroots and kind of you know, scrappy you know, way to, to sell a film. And, and the movie picked up uh, and started to get this following, almost a cult following. And, and so here we are, you know, 12 years later, re-releasing it. It's a beautiful journey, one that you've yeah. taken I and so many others have taken it. it. Before the movie. Before, Before the movie. Before, yes. 2003 yeah. or four, I got to hike the Camino de Santiago, which is this incredible pilgrimage. That's right. And your story is has a beautiful sort of twist. Um, mm-hmm. It's a faith, you know, it's a faithful pilgrimage. It is that, mm-hmm. yeah. And one it in is. which, in this story, a father mm-hmm. has lost a son. Mm-hmm. That's right. But Martin's character is not really faith-driven. He's mm-hmm. sort of a lapsed Catholic, which is unlike Martin. Martin is very devout, mm-hmm. uh, which is one of the things that we got into while we were fil- filming. He's like, well, I have to stop at this church. I want to stop at that <laughs> church. I want to <laughs> weep here. I want to weep there. I said, we have to make this a bigger tent. We, yeah. have, to, we have to invite everybody, in, not just Catholics. Mm-hmm. And, so, and so I endeavored to do that. But, um, but yes, he, um, he, he always wanted to do the Camino. Mm-hmm. He'd always, uh, in, in fact, um, did it in mm-hmm. 2003 mm-hmm. with my son. He was probably the, he was I mean, out there at the same, same time. Same time. Right? That would have been totally bizarre. <laughs> but they didn't Look at have, that. Wow. They didn't have the, um, the time to do it because he was on hiatus during uh, West Wing. Yeah. And so it, they, yeah. they rented a car and they drove. And they stopped in a town uh, called Burgos, which is, if you're looking at the map, is about mm-hmm. two hours north of Madrid, but it's mm-hmm. on the Camino. Mm-hmm. My son meets a young lady in an albergue, mm-hmm. falls in love, and he moves to Spain. And so he lived there for nine years. So he mar- oh, did he, he marry her? her. Yeah, wow. they, they have a child now, wow. and, and it's uh, my well, granddaughter, they- Alma. So it's, uh, <laughs> so it's this whole, the wow. movie is, again, inspired by my son, Taylor. Uh, starring my father, dedicated to my grandfather. Wow. And it, and it is, like you wow. said, it is, it, it's a transformational movie. Yeah. This is the sort of film that when people see it, they mm-hmm. get up off their couch, they book their ticket to Spain, oh, and they do beautiful. the Camino de Santiago. Oh. Emilio, thank you so this much. This was incredible. Beautiful. I love full, that full there's circle. so much, so much yeah. behind it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, the Way, you guys, mm-hmm. if you haven't seen it, or even yeah. if you have, go back and see it. It's being re-released in select theaters nationwide, on May 16th. It's a great Father's Day film. Yes. Oh, indeed it is. Thank you, indeed Amelia. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Coming up next, we'll go live to a Texas elementary school where Donna's getting ready to surprise a beloved teacher. Coming up right after this.
today with our knock knock surprise where Donna shows up at the doorstep of someone very special. And since it is Teacher Appreciation Day, she's going to surprise an incredible educator right there in Irving, Texas. Hi, Donna. Yeah. Hi, ladies. I'm so excited. I am at the Johnston Elementary School about to surprise desi deserving teacher, fourth grade teacher, Miss Crisha Powell. Right now, she's in the principal's office having a meeting, and I'm about to interrupt that meeting and have some fun. Are you ready? Let's go. Knocking on the principal's door. Hopefully, Miss Powell will answer. Miss Powell? Hi! <laughs> Open the door! Come on out. I'm Donna from the Today Show, and you are live on Hoda and Jenna right now. Come on down, we've got a long, fun ride planned for you, okay? <laughs> we have got the drill team, we have got the drum line. I know you're wondering what in the world is going on. It is Teacher Appreciation Day, and we want to thank you for everything that you do. tell your students how wonderful they are. So we want to tell you and show you just how wonderful you are. So let's take a look at this video. Crochet is a special teacher because she loves her kids like they are her own. Her classroom is engaging. Her aura is bright. During Christmas time, she gets them all each individualized gifts to make sure that whatever they have, they need. I've never seen a teacher really be an example for all educators of how you make and build relationships with kids. They want to come to school every single day because of what she does in the classroom. Whenever I'm just sad, like she would just cheer me up, be like, it's okay, girl, don't worry about it. And I'm like, I love her. One time she made it to where we were, we had little tents made of paper over our desk, like we were camping and we were learning and it, was, and it made it fun. Miss Powell, this year I loved learning because of the way you do things. You try to make things as fun as possible for us. Pop, see go, pop, pop, see go. Miss Powell had her families of her students write letters to them the morning of the STAR test so they could read those quietly to themselves before they took a big test. And you know, these kiddos get really nervous about say testing. It was really a beautiful little moment. I truly feel like she's made me a better educator, and not only a better educator, but just a better person. I feel like no one deserves this more than she does. Ms. Powell, you're the best teacher I have ever had. Thank you for always being there for me. You're like a rainbow in a person. You are just, you just make me smile every time I see you. We love you, Crochet! You are a rainbow in a person. How are you feeling after watching that? Oh my gosh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Miss Powell, you are truly an inspiration and you have such energy and drive for making the school days so special for all these kids day after day. Why? I just love kids. Like, I, there's literally nothing else I can say that I love kids. I love, I enjoy being around them. And I don't see myself doing anything else but teaching. I love y'all. Thank you. Well, they love you so much. And we're so happy you're a teacher. By the way, your mom and grandma are right over there. <laughs> and I know that when you were young, when you were these students. <laughs> I know. When you were these students' age, it was your dream to be a teacher. And how, what do you want to say to these kids about following their dreams? Just try your best. I don't know. I love y'all. <laughs> okay, well, we have a couple more surprises for you. Are you ready? Um, <laughs> okay, well, in, Happiness has a book of love letters that the kids wrote to you because you did the same for them before a state exam. Happiness, you want to give it over? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, happiness. Oh, so sweet. So as you're reading at that, we have one more surprise. Okay. Hey, Ariel, are you around? Can you bring out the banner, please? <laughs> On your behalf, Scholastic is donating five thousand Scholastic dollars that you can use for school supplies, furniture, games, anything for the classroom. Oh wow! Oh my God! Thank you. And Miss Powell, I'm sorry. They say never lie to a teacher, but I did lie because we have one more surprise. Madeline, are you there? Scholastic is donating $5,000 worth of books because we know how much you love books for the class. Oh my gosh, it's amazing! Thank you. How are you feeling? I don't know, I'm overwhelmed. This is a lot. <laughs> do you think this will do a lot for the kids they and for will, the class? They will love it all. Like, we just, like, they deserve it. Like, we need it. Thank you so much. Well, you deserve it. Thank you for all that you do on behalf of the school. And kids, I know you want to give, come give her a hug now. It's time. You. Oh, and there's so many other Miss Powell's out there. <laughs> look at Miss Powell. Miss Wait, Powell's look. dancing. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh -oh. oh my gosh. I definitely, oh, just definitely so want to be in a class with Miss Powell too. one Ms. day. Me too. Miss Powell is an incredible, incredible <sighs> teacher. We love you, Miss Powell. We love you. And all uh, of those incredible kids. Uh, Coming up next, a Mother's Day surprise. Two deserving moms get head to, to, to makeovers <laughs> after this. to our series, Style Me Over, and in honor of Mother's Day, we found two marvelous moms who deserve some extra pampering. Okay, we paired them with one of our favorites, fashion expert, Melissa yes. Garcia, to each, give each of them a gorgeous new look. Check it out. So we recently asked our viewers if there were any deserving moms in their life in need of a makeover, and the submissions came flooding in. We actually had two moms nominated by their moms for an incredible makeover. Let's see what they have to say. Hi, Hoda and Jenna. I want to talk to you about my daughter, Katie. She is one of the most positive people you'll ever meet. She's a mother of three, and she has spent the last two and a half years supporting her family on a teacher's salary, while her husband, John, has been getting his doctorate in nursing. Good morning, Hoda and Jenna. I'd like to nominate my daughter, Susan, for a style makeover. Susan is an extraordinary mom. Susan surprised the whole family by announcing when she was 38 years old that she was going to become a single mom by choice. Katie always puts her family and their needs first. She rarely takes time for herself. She never complains and always has a smile on her face. Her husband is finally graduating this weekend and Katie deserves to look as beautiful as the person she is. Susan is a physician assistant in neurosurgery. Her normal wardrobe is black scrubs. Susan spends all her time and money and effort on her girls and none on herself. 
She deserves a makeover and a style upgrade. I'm so excited for her to get pampered for a change. I am so excited because we invited Katie and Susan to New York to get ready for their style upgrades. Let's go meet them. Before we get started, can you each tell me a little bit about your personal style? My um, personal style I call frumpy. I wear a lot of black scrubs all day, hair back, no makeup. Um, I usually wear just pants and a shirt, whatever yeah. I find on the clearance rack. How do you both want to feel? I would love to feel kind of put together mm -hmm. and with a little pizzazz, um, show maybe a little bit of my personality more. I think I just want to feel comfortable um, and confident. I do like the color. Comfortable? Yeah. Come on out. Oh, wow. Wow. I think it's so flattering on you. And it's really beautiful on you. Yeah. And I, it's fun. I, this is it. This, is, this has the wow factor. I like this one. <gasps> I'm so excited because I know this has a lot of features you were afraid I like to try on with this, right? Yes. I feel comfortable and confident, which is what I wanted. It's really pretty. Okay, so now that we have your look, let's head over to the salon and get your hair done. Hi, so good to see you. How are you? Leona, meet Katie and Susan. Welcome to LW Salon, I'm so excited. I use um, box colorings to try oh, to cover my no. I know. So I have like <laughs> some over-processed mm -hmm. length, and as far as haircuts, mm -hmm. I usually find a YouTube video that tells me where to put a ponytail. YouTube is like <laughs> the hairdresser for dummies. Look at all this beautiful hair. Yes. Yeah. Definitely need a cut. Okay. And yes, it's all one length. So yes. You can add some layers and some framing around your face. Mm -hmm. Hopefully your kids recognize you. Yeah. Are you guys excited? Yes. yes. <laughs> Oh, we're excited. Oh, we are we so excited. We can't wait. Okay, when we come back, Melissa is going to help us reveal Susan and Katie's new looks. We can't wait right after this. Before the break, we met moms Susan and Katie, who were treated to style me over makeovers with our fashion expert, Melissa Garcia, and the hairstylist, Leona Wilson. And now time for the big reveal. Okay, we are joined by their moms, Rosemary and Marianne, along with Susan's kids, Bren and Laura. Yeah. Hi, guys. And Katie's kids, Ashley Logan and Maggie. All right, kids, you ready? Are you ready to see your moms? All right, we're going to start with Susan. Susan always wears black scrubs, you guys know. This is a before picture of Susan. All right, guys, let's bring out the new Susan. Wow! She looks beautiful. Glamorous. Yes, yes, blonde hair. Yeah, her hair's a little hair. She's got a few highlights. Uh -huh. What do you think? What do you oh, think? Oh, I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. This is um, something that I would not have picked out. And um, I've never had my hair color. You are styling. You look gorgeous. Yes. And Melissa, that's a great so gold beautiful. print. And I, you know, 
She said she wears black all the time. Her personality is so vibrant. I'm like, I have to put her in color. I have to put her in a print. Okay. And this was so outside her. Oh, all right. Beautiful. Thank the hair, you. The makeup thank, all. You. Thank, all right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, y'all, we have Katie. Okay, we know that she wears pants and shirts every day. There's Let's see her before picture. Yeah. And bring out Katie. Come on, Katie. Kids, y'all ready? Whoa! Oh, wow. So Mary, what do you That's think about beautiful. that haircut? She looks so nice. I love it. You look, by the way, oh. you look gorgeous. gorgeous. That top is all you. You gotta get a million in that color. I wanna beautiful. just say what your son said. What did you yeah. say? She looks so nice. She looks so oh. nice. Oh. Okay, you well. guys. Come, can we give our step back in? Yeah, come back in and can we give yeah. our moms our flowers? Yeah, you so guys can cute. step right around. You guys, how do y'all feel? Do you feel like the awesome moms you so are? Yeah. You look gorgeous. Mom. Wow. Oh, my you guys, we want to say we thank have, you. We have one other thing oh, for yeah. you. Um, QC New York Spa on Governor's Island wants to invite you both and your moms for their <laughs> Couples Day Spa 25 package, which includes full day entrance to their wellness experience, and it doesn't expire, so go whenever We're going to give them to your mothers. Uh, <laughs> but you guys, it's an thank awesome you. place. Y'all, thank, so Yo, thank you, moms. Thank you for Kids. nominating. You're incredible, oh, Melissa. Thank, thank, thank you for Leona and Leona. Yeah. Makeup. Yes, yeah. yes, yes of course. Y'all look beautiful. Okay. This is cool. All right. We're back. Right, right after, after this. this. She looks beautiful. Wow. Y'all look so good. Okay, y'all can have Tomorrow, an inspiring conversation with actress Selma Blair. Oh, I love her. Plus, we'll celebrate three moms and their daughters who are all nurses at the same hospital. And what every mom needs Ooh. a good night's sleep. <laughs> we got the best bedding award winners. Oh, can we go get in bed now? Is it too early? That's never too early. Okay, good 99. Bye. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day, we are adding to the star power in our studio the biggest names. Only on today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Hey, buddy, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. through New York's Chinatown is a food lover's dream journey. Our first stop, a grocery store. This is such a pure window into a thousand-year-old culture and cuisine. Our guide is Francis Lamb, writer, publisher, and host of The Splendid Table on public radio. Anywhere you travel is you go to the market. You go see what people shop for. You go see what people eat. You go see what's important to people. Lamb's mother shopped here, as have generations of Chinese. For here is a wall of ramen. 
I am probably 45% by body weight noodle. There are all these different noodles, rice noodles, Thai style, Japanese style. But the dried foods are the pride of Po Wing Fong food market. Delicacies. These are dried abalones. Pricey. Oh, they're wild, 220 bucks a pound. Delicious. It right. doesn't taste like a fresh oyster, it just tastes like the evil superhero version of an oyster. Like it's just darker, <laughs> moodier, you know, it's like Batman. Sophia Sao is in charge here, but it's her mother who has been behind the counter for as long as anyone can remember. What does it mean to you to follow in your family's footsteps to, to be running this store now? For me personally, I like to think that I'm continuing their legacy. So I think that I'm not only just helping my family financially, but also the community. Hang around a grocery store long enough and you'll get hungry. What's our next stop? I want to take you to the second coming of a classic tofu shop that was sort of more in the heart of Chinatown. Inside, we watch the modern day version of the ancient alchemy of tofu. Paul Ang is the proprietor of Fong An Tofu Shop. It's starting to coagulate, and so now I'm going to cover it, and yeah. it will set, kind of like, a, like jello. The finished product, though, the texture of silk on your tongue, served sweet or savory. But you have that really, really creamy pudding. You get, like, the crunch of that shallot, and you get, like, the little crispiness of the pickles. We tried both. It's really one of those where's this been all my life sort of taste experiences. On we wandered, wanting to stop everywhere and taste even what we did not recognize. She said you can eat it raw if you want. What do you think? Oh my God, this is so good. It's like a, if a cucumber and a pear had a baby. The energy in Chinatown is palpable but life here is not what it once was. In January of 2020, yeah. people stopped coming to Chinatown because it was the China virus. Many a store shuttered, some permanently. It's the economic devastation that we felt all over the country, but you layer on top of that a rise in hate crimes, a rise in racist rhetoric, a rise of scapegoating. It's rough, man. It's rough. Yet people persevere, and perhaps no place better represents that than our last stop. Waiyan, Chinese fine dining. Chef Shen Lei Tang, son of the original chef, holds forth in the kitchen. Among the specialties, sesame noodles. It's killer, right? Yeah. It's like a little bit of garlic, a little bit of scallion. You can taste everything, and every flavor kind of comes and goes. Honestly, I've, I heard, okay, we're going to go have cold sesame noodles at this really <laughs> fancy restaurant. <laughs> this, it's like this great, exceeds, yeah. exceeds my expectations. Far exceeds. The shredded beef, best I've ever had. And the key? How come your food is so much better than everybody else's? Cooking from your heart. Cooking from your heart. Cooking from your heart, right? What a Cooking beautiful Isn't that the story. truth? But Chinatown, it's, it just it, the life is on the street there. Mm. Yes. You just feel the vibrancy as you walk around, and you kind of go, what's that? What's this? Stop in here. Stop in there. Taste a little of this. Taste a little well, of that. I'm glad you did that, because some of us, we want to go, but we just don't know what we're buying or what to look for. Like right. that one thing that looked like a cucumber. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, was Francis didn't even know what it was. Really? That was the coolest was part. Was it sweet? It what well it was taste like a lemon and a zucchini and a cucumber huh. all at the same wow. time. I'm going to Fong Ung for tofu. Yeah. That looks oh amazing. That looks so that amazing. phenomenal. Food is typically somebody's first introduction into somebody else's culture. For the past several years, chefs Tim Ma and Kevin Tian have been bringing people to the table, literally. It's not just going and getting dumplings or bun mi. It's okay now that you're at the table. How can we expand our conversation? to learn about someone else. But their start was decidedly less glamorous. Wait, wait, wait. You bought a restaurant off Craigslist? Yeah. Like, literally, I was that inexperienced at opening restaurants. I mean, I I bought a couple of things on Craigslist, but never a, never a restaurant. Now, Tim's a high-profile chef in Washington, D.C., giving his take on Chinese takeout at Lucky Danger, while Kevin focuses on contemporary Vietnamese cuisine at Moon Rabbit. But as violence against the Asian community increased nationally, Tim and Kevin knew they needed to use their culinary skills to combat it. What did you come up with? 
We started with one dinner here in Washington, D.C. with five Asian American chefs raising money with this one to-go dinner because of the pandemic. And then overnight, Kevin and I decided, let's see how big we can get. And so we called our friends and texted our friends overnight, and we were at 45 chefs and nine dinners the next day. The duo laying out a schedule and launching a website overnight, and chefs stopping AAPI hate was born. What was it like when you realized this thing sold out as quickly as it did? That tells us that people are paying attention to the issues at hand. People want to help. They want to make change. So far, they've raised at least $122,000, donating to organizations fighting racism and violence. You have this event. It's supposed to be a one-time thing. But you realize you need to keep it going. How come? For us, it's all about continuing to spread awareness and amplify the voice for as long as we can or as loud as we can. For Kevin and Tim, it's deeply personal. I immediately thought about my parents. In those the fuzzy videos of security footage, I can't tell the difference between that person and my parents. And so that's where it, it kind of hit home. And for both chefs, it's a reminder that we haven't left the past behind. It wasn't safe to play in our front yard growing up in California. People would come by and say things like what they perceived to be like uh, an Asian language or they would like throw throw things at us. I was born in Arkansas in the 70s. One night, my sister and I were sleeping in our bedroom. Something came through the window, shattered the entire window. We didn't find out it was a brick until the morning. Today, a few months after Kevin and Tim's first dinner, the program's already launched nationally with events set from San Francisco to New York. And right here in Manhattan, the chefs gave me an exclusive taste of their first dinner. This is amazing. A delicious meal that comes with a side of hope. I have three kids. We need to fight this now so that the next generation can fight for what's next. What we can do is focus on the future, a beautiful future that we can pass on to everybody. And guys, Chef Stopping AAPI Hate is getting even bigger. Several intercontinental hotels will be raising money by featuring one of Kevin's dishes on their menu. And the CEO of Open Table has agreed to actually buy any unsold meals oh, in wow. San Francisco. It is, I mean, the meals are spectacular. Mm -hmm. You're just saying how delicious. Yeah, and out of something so horrible, uh, something really positive mm -hmm. can come by. You wonder, how are people like this? But if you want to find a meal near you, go to today.com slash food, and we'll help you find it. Vibrant, diverse, the centers of festivals and culture. From San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York, to Mexico City, Lima, and Sydney, they are interwoven into the fabric of cities around the globe. Including Paris, city of romance, with a passion for food. And it's a love shared by the folks who live and work here. Here we are in the oldest Chinatown in Europe. We could also call it like Asian town because you have all uh, kinds of uh, Asian food here, not just Chinese. Catherine and Joe help run the largest chain of Asian grocery stores here. 
when we travel, the first thing we're looking for is the Chinatown, just for the food. When we travel, we need our Asian food. <laughs> Even though we're 100% French, we're 100% of Asian descent, and we don't want to lose either of it. We want to be 200%. <laughs> Bonjour! Bonjour! <laughs> come to face Chinatown yeah. and this is our unique gate. Actually, it's a combination of uh, French and Chinese culture. But it's not been easy. Large numbers of Chinese laborers first came to France at the beginning of World War I, even helping in the trenches. And yet, even today, simply gaining permission for this Chinatown gate took years of negotiation. It is the Chinese character for gate. Bontan arrived in France as a child on a boat. My, my parents, when they came to France, they come to France forever. No idea to going back. Back then, he couldn't even speak French. Today, he is a member of the French Parliament. Look at this. And runs the family business. Importing tea, he travels back to China to select himself. His life has changed and his community has changed too. People coming from mainland China, for example, they have in mind that they're coming here to make a better life, earn more money, and then go back to China. Mm -hmm. So it's a different uh, um, way of thinking, of, of seeing friends. It's a story reflected in city after city. London's Chinatown is located in the heart of the city, in what was once a rundown area with cheap rent. It now combines tradition, like this complimentary medicine store. Very strong. Oh, yeah. Wow. With fashionable foods from across Asia. Ellen Chu relocated here from Singapore, bringing the street food with her. Well, we have modernized this place, you know. We don't have roast duck here. You have to serve the food that you, will, you yourself will eat. While Dumpling's legend is run by Jeff Long, an entrepreneur with Hong Kong roots, whose restaurant has even received a visit from royalty. It's all about great food, unity of family, getting together. So you're going to make me work for my dinner? Ah, uh, pearl and twist. <laughs> OK. <laughs> this is really not easy. He's <laughs> not likely to be hiring me anytime soon. Obviously, uh, these are my dumplings. <laughs> I can't cook. I can't cook, guys. I asked my wife. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I'm sorry. And listen, what I love about uh, <laughs> what I love about that piece, though, is so often during the Olympics, guys. You know, we yes. concentrate on the traditional cultures of a particular place. We don't put enough attention on the way that cultures fuse together, and, yes. and particularly the impact of immigration and, and how immigration improves uh, the culture of a country. And of course, food unites us, guys. Yep, it right? sure does. Absolutely. That's such and, a good point. And again, to, to my point, tomorrow, Keir Simmons is from Paris. <laughs> uh, and, and oh, you get to like, get on a plane <laughs> Yeah, Paris. he gets to immigrate to Paris. <laughs> like I said, I just want to be Keir for a day. Just a day. Oh, we need like a week to experience uh, uh, Although okay. I wouldn't want to interview Putin, so that's, that's on <laughs> oh, Keir. Well, <laughs> full range. So, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Putin and Keir having some dim sum. All right, Keir, thank, <laughs> thank you, you, my Keir. friend. <laughs>
while this month of May we are showcasing the Asian American and Pacific Islander community with a network wide series AAPI Amplified Stronger Together. And this morning we are shining a light on a nonprofit called Gold House. Yeah, they, they have a lot of supporters like Crazy Rich Asians and In the Heights director John M. Chu, also Olympic siblings Alex and uh, Maya Shibutani, the Ship Sibs, you know the Ship, ship Sibs. sibs. <laughs> uh, and the mission of Gold House is to empower and uplift all members of the AAPI community. Right now, for the last couple of years, the Asian American community has been in the spotlight for good or, or wrong reasons. But we don't want that just to be a moment. We don't want that just to be a blip and then wait another 20 years when we get to have the attention. Turning a moment into a movement. Executive Director Jeremy Tran and President Bing Chen are leaders at Gold House. It's a collective of Asian and Pacific Islander changemakers fighting for socioeconomic equity. How is Gold House born? A bunch of us were in a room and we all looked around and we wondered why Asians just weren't thriving in society. Uh, why on media we felt like we were always portrayed as weak or the villains. We wondered why when we walked into our offices and our work, why we were employed but weren't being promoted. Across the board we wondered why does no one see us in the way that we think we deserve to be seen. And uh, we decided it was time to do something about it along with the support of some of the most influential names in the community, from actor Daniel Day Kim to fashion designer Prabhu Gurung to Olympian Nathan Chen to executives of major companies. The group established itself in 2018 with the aim to unite and uplift. Where does the name come from? What, what does Gold House mean? It means two things. One is house we're trying to breed familiarity and safety. This is a safe haven that you can come home to. I think gold is actually the fusion of the 50 incredible ethnicities we have in the API diaspora. And second is we're trying to head on target the misperception that all API folks are cheap. Uh, we're not. Um, some of us are easygoing. Some of us are a little high maintenance. But we do want to show that we're, there's an air of premiumness, of quality. The first part of the movement was focused on Hollywood with the organization's gold open concept, amplifying API-led films like Crazy Rich Asians and Parasite to ensure box office success. We're now uh, the first API call for every Hollywood studio, network, and streamer on everything from cultural consultation, so making sure we get script storytelling right, all the way to marketing. From partnering with Spotify to bolster musicians to creating a filmmaker fellowship with Netflix and Tribeca Studios, their success landed them a feature in Vanity Fair. Today, the influence of Gold House expands beyond entertainment, whether it's through a book club or empowering entrepreneurs with funds and resources. But the next phase will focus on helping other communities shine as well. I understand that the organization is aiming to do some some, some projects uh, with other marginalized groups, some collaborations. Uh, what, what are we looking at here? Gold House is not trying to build a world formed by Asians. That's so backwards, self-segregationist, myopic, that's not why we're here. Uh, we're trying to empower the world's majority, APIs with four and a half billion people, to serve and lead all marginalized folks. I know very few good ways to support another community sincerely than to invest in them to show them and put our money where our mouths are. We can share talent, we can share dollars, and we can share deals. Because I don't know that we can just wait for the old system to employ all of us, to promote all of us, or to invest in us. So much of what we recognize is important out there is the intersectionality between being Asian and Asian American and also being you know, part of the disability community, being part of the LGBTQ plus community. So where we live is finding those intersectionalities and finding ways to amplify each other. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, their ultimate goal is to, to no longer exist. They don't want to be mm -hmm. around anymore because if they're successful, there would be no need for a group to fight for representation mm -hmm. and success. But Good I mean, point. keep in mind, they've only been around four years. Yeah, four and years. look at what they've accomplished. Yeah. I'm so glad you did that story, well, Craig. thank you.
Anna Huang and Chloe Chan, two second-generation Chinese Americans and founders of the Mott Street Girls. They launched MSG, as they call it, during the pandemic to provide walking tours of Chinatown with a mission, help the community they love while educating people on Chinese American history and culture, something they became passionate about as volunteer docents at a local museum. We are tour guides, we are storytellers, that's what we are you know, specializing in. So in addition to telling Chinese American history, we want to tell the stories of the business owners as well. Tell me some of your memories here, what it's meant to you. Well, I grew up in New Jersey. Me and my family would always come out here to Manhattan Chinatown every weekend, you know, buying groceries, visiting the restaurants. I took piano lessons here in Chinatown. <laughs> so then the pandemic hits, and obviously cities across the country, communities across the country were impacted. But tell me what it did here in Chinatown. It was a complete ghost town, you know, while people were still going to Italy. No one was coming to Chinatown because of fears of the virus. But these businesses are really struggling, and so by telling the story, hoping we bring more foot traffic into Chinatown as well. What do your parents think of what you're doing? Are they proud of you? I think <laughs> Asian parents generally don't tell you that they're proud of you. <laughs> I think they were very skeptical at first. Mott Street Girls is their side hustle. Chloe works full-time in public health as a clinical researcher and Anna as an analytics consultant at a financial services firm. My parents came here so that I could chase the quote-unquote American dream, right? So I am trying to do that as well, but I think a part of me is just like, I want to connect back to my roots. There's like so much going on beyond just cheap eats and you know, designer bags. Yeah. So when someone signs up for a Mott Street Girls tour, what can they expect? They can expect a lot of walking. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I came prepared. Lucky for me, I got a private tour. So right now we're at the intersection of Pell and Dora Street. So this is one of the older streets of Chinatown. You can see this is actually what it looked like back in the day. Kind of looked the same, right? Besides the fact that they're all men, right? Because back in the day, Chinatown was known as a bachelor society. So at one point, the ratio of men to women was 200 to one. <gasps> Just think about how hard it must be to be, right? <laughs> I love the street the way it's painted. Yeah. During the pandemic, the Chinatown mural project was born to beautify the streets and encourage people to visit the neighborhood. I really like how they use blue and white. It's kind of reminiscent of Chinese porcelain. We need a picture here. <laughs> Our next stop, Ting's Gift Shop, one of the oldest in Manhattan, run by the same family for three generations. It's like fill from the brim, from the bottom to the ceiling. Oh, you don't find that, like, I love uh, New York City t-shirts here. These are really like the knickknacks that you can find, like, it really highlights, like, Chinese culture. And MSG makes sure to highlight many of the area's businesses on their social media. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> like where to go for the best sponge cake with a recipe that's been the same for decades. I feel like my family comes here every time we come from, uh, come from Boston. Or which fruit stand to hit up? So this is Moi Trong's food fruit stand. She is like here, you know, out in the scorching summers, the bitter winters every day. And there are plenty of surprises along the way. Can you guess what this Pegasus is made of? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's made of dried egg noodles. Can you believe that? <laughs> Finally, the tour wouldn't be complete without stopping by the very restaurant where the idea for Mott Street Girls was born. I feel pretty cool. I'm on Mott Street now with the Mott Street Girls. Yeah. yeah. You're one of yeah. us now. Yeah. Oh, I can give the tour. <laughs> Now, as you can see there, the Mott Street Girls are giving tours of Chinatown even in the cold and following COVID guidelines, of course. And for those who can't make it to New York City, they're also starting to branch out with virtual tours so you could take part even from home. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. especially considering the vast amount of, you know, the audience. They're all over the yeah. country, so. Absolutely. Let's get I just thought the whole world of Vietnamese cuisine was something that was really untapped. Growing up as the daughter of a Vietnamese refugee, Debbie Way Mullen always knew her mom's culture was special. Tell me about growing up and what being part of the culture represented. Food is such a huge part of us culturally. I didn't know that nobody else knew about all these Vietnamese cuisine secrets like Vietnamese coffee. Debbie started her career working in sustainability at World Bank. And while she was working to alleviate poverty, she found the corporate world wasn't a great fit for her. It was such a big, slow organization and just realizing that my personality was so different. Like I love to move a million miles a minute. I love to be super creative. When I learned about the Vietnamese coffee market, I thought that I could really utilize a lot of the things that I knew about the fundamentals of how you build sustainable supply 
supply chains and apply it into a, a business. How fortuitous that you like to move a million miles an hour and it's coffee. So tell me about what made you want to introduce Vietnamese coffee into the mainstream world. I knew that it was something that was so delicious. And I saw the opportunity that Vietnam was actually the second largest coffee producer in the world and just really largely left out of the specialty coffee market. That's when I really felt like there was something so exciting there. So using $10,000 she had in savings, Debbie got to work brewing her business, Copper Cow Coffee. I was just renting commercial kitchen space in the evenings and the weekends, and I was going to events like farmer's markets or holiday markets just to see how people responded to the product. Debbie shook up the traditional cup of Vietnamese coffee with unique flavor combinations like lavender, churro, and salted caramel. After two years of self-funding Copper Cow, Debbie quit her corporate job to begin fundraising. Tell me about the fundraising and what it was like walking into the room as a woman with a story that represented your culture. About 80% of our customers are women and they're millennial or Gen Z women. And you can imagine that that was not who I was pitching to. <laughs> for Yes, I could imagine. Customer. I pitched for months and months and months and got all no's. I got over 50 no's, all telling me this is niche. It wasn't until we got into several hundred Walmart doors that I was finally able to quash those, those kind of objections about it being niche. Now, six years later, Debbie is in 2,400 stores across the country. She says they've sold more than 10 million coffees. Not only is it important for you, you said, to be a female entrepreneur, but also to be a female entrepreneur representing your culture. Having degrees from Berkeley and MIT and people still wanting me to get coffee for the room, that was always just a really, really hard reality for me. For me to be able to represent that to my employees or to other um, aspiring entrepreneurs is something that I think is so important. Isn't it ironic that you know getting coffee for the room to be a negative thing at the beginning and now you're like, no problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get coffee. coffee for everybody. I gotta get paid better. That's for sure. Cooking up a fantastic pasta dish with assistant managing editor of the New York Times and founder of New York Times Cooking, Sam Sifton. And he's gearing up for the New York Times Food Festival. Ooh. It's coming back October the 8th. I'm so excited. Uh, Sam's going to be moderating a special panel with the cast and crew of the FX hit show, The Bear. Mm. Uh, so we decided to make a spin on a family style meal from the show with Sam's Amatra Triana. On, on the, the fly, fly, on the fly, which okay. is from the show. But what I love about your column, you talk about this concept, and this is what we're going to do. It's a no recipe recipe. That's right. What do you mean? What I mean by that is you don't have to follow the rules all the time. Uh -huh. You just have to kind of start with a prompt mm. and get going. Okay. And, and, and I provide the prompt. And then you make it however you like it. Mm. But you add lib. Yeah, add lib. Okay, so what so do we want to add lib? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Especially is, if it's bacon. This is bear adjacent. Okay. This is not bear cooking. <laughs> okay. I'm not carmy. <laughs> right. This is bear adjacent. So we've got some slab bacon here uh -huh. that I Yum. chopped up for that little tease. And we're going to get it into a pan with some olive oil. And we're just going to let that get going and render some fat. About how much bacon? I like a lot of bacon. I do too. Is that enough bacon? <laughs> yes, a lot of bacon for is it? good. So yeah. a lot of bacon mm. going. And we're just going to let that render, render, render. Okay. Mm. And if when you don't use bacon, mm. traditionally. Mm. Well, traditionally it was made with guanciale, the oh. hog jowl bacon. Right. But I've done it with salami. I've done it with pepperoni. Okay. Any cured meat, right? So we got that going. Next, we're going to get some onions. Okay. That's going to help us with our sauce. What's your tip for cutting onions? I go across. Uh-huh. And then down the middle. Okay. Right? And always leave that guy right there, that okay. root end. Yeah, right? exactly. Leave hold, him there. That'll hold everything together oh. as you're cutting. Pro tip. Got it? Pro tip. Pro, Pro tip. tip. All right. So into that rendered bacon. Ah. Uh, oh my goodness. Secret ingredient. Fat is flavor, my friend. Yes, oh my gosh. It is. So <laughs> we got that going. And we'll get mm -hmm. that down pretty low. Uh -huh. Let it go until it's pretty caramel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? 
Now we're going to build the sauce out. Mm. We've got some canned chopped tomatoes, All right. which are going to go in there. If, if, you, you, if, if you've had some like a, a good harvest of garden tomatoes, could you use fresh? You definitely could do that, but I like those garden tomatoes raw. Mm. You know, yeah. on a, like a bruschetta or yeah. something, uh, okay. salad, a tomato watermelon salad. That's always delicious. Mm. So this guy goes and goes and goes and goes and builds up flavor. Mm -hmm. We've oh, made some good. pasta. Okay. okay. I've added some butter to that pasta. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. Because flavor. Flavor. I'm like, exactly. that's why this is so good. Right. You, you, you got to pay the, attention. You know, yeah. you really want to get some nice plushness. And it's really like five ingredients, too. It's nothing. But it tastes so, it's so layered. And, and do you, can you, is there any pasta you could use? Or? Yeah, you could use a bucatini if you can find any, uh -huh. or a spaghetti, or, you know, you could do this with shells and have a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. So we get that going around, right. okay. and then what we're going to do when we're done mm -hmm. and we're happy with it is hit it with some Pecorino Romano. Oh, oh, Pecorino okay. Romano. More flavor. Mm -hmm. More Let's flavor. Try this. Some red pepper flakes. Oh. Okay. And some chopped parsley because... It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did you add the pasta water to that as well? I'll add a little bit of pasta water okay. in there just to loosen things up if it gets tight. It's delicious. Okay. Hey, hey, Sam, talk, talk to us about uh, the festival coming up. Oh, oh yeah. We're really excited. Um, we started the festival a couple years ago. We missed a year or two mm -hmm. because of the pandemic, and now we're back in Damrush Park in Lincoln Center. We're going to have a okay, ton so of great chefs coming in. Mm -hmm. We sold out tickets in the first tranche, but wow. we're putting a new set on on September 22nd for sale. And then for those who can't make it to New York, mm -hmm. we're going out on the road with oh, some really? of our, with oh, Melissa wow. Clark and oh. others, some of our One best of our chefs. Faves. And we're going to cook with some of America's greatest chefs on the road. And you That's can cook awesome. at home with cooking kits from the New York Times store. That's awesome. Al right. always good, raves good about recipes. Not the New biggest York customer. It's, it's, it's the, the thing that I, I go to all the time, right after uh, today food. I <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But New York Times cooking, we're giving you a run. It is you fantastic. Sam Sifton, always Thank love you. when you're here. Thanks so, so much. Good. This morning in today's food on a twist, an Italian classic here to make pasta cacio e walnut. Ooh. Chef and cookbook <laughs> author Carla Lali Music. I wish there were smell o vision. I, it's, yeah. It yeah. smells yeah. Uh, so Amazing. good here. Her new yes. cookbook is called That Sounds So Good and This Sounds So Love Good. Carla, good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, so girl. start us off here because cacio e pepe you've always heard of, but sure. cacio e walnut, what are we talking about? I know, here? and not like cacio e pepe needed improvement <laughs> as a classic, <laughs> but a couple of things that can go wrong for people. One is that the cheese doesn't melt yeah. because it's it those clumpy. hard grating cheeses. So mm -hmm. I changed up the cheese. And for me, like, it's great, all those textures. It's like adult mac and cheese, mm -hmm. but I need a little crunch. Okay. Yeah. So we've got pasta boiling. That's going to come in. Just keep an eye on that. Okay. And I just like to crush the garlic. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what kind of pasta, by the way. I like a big tube for this, okay. and but you can really use anything. Like um, spaghetti would be fine, but I like with a big tube, some of these pieces will get inside oh, the tube. Can, the and then, <laughs> exactly. The and then bite. you get like a little secret. Um, Wait, you didn't crush them as much. Okay. No, so these are just going to toast kind of like that, and I'll press down on them while they're going or maybe mm -hmm. one of you will press down okay. while they're going and then instead of toasting the walnuts in the oven I 
toast them in the pan with the oil and the garlic. Oh, so they kind of pick up all those flavors mm -hmm. and infuse. And that really gives a crunch. Um, so another thing that's classic with cacio e pepe is that you would use a sheep smoked cheese, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, pecorino or pecorino and parm. Mm -hmm. But what can happen is those cheeses, like, they like to clump up yes, when they're it's melting. it's so frustrating. Yeah. So I, I have a fettuccine Alfredo it. recipe that is great, but it's very similar. The cheese clumps up on people. Mm -hmm. So for this, that was really in my mind, and I wanted to solve for it. So instead of using pecorino, I switched it to manchego. Oh, we went oh. to Spain. We went okay. to Spain. Oh, so a little okay. bit with the walnuts mm -hmm. and the manchego goes like, yeah, now we're on a like a European siesta. Oh, I love that idea. We're just going across. Could yeah. you use another nut done. other than walnuts? Totally. Yeah. So my book has spinets for every single recipe. So <laughs> you could use pecans, you could use almonds, you could mm. use cashews, you could really okay. use whatever you want as long as it's got crunched, even pistachios. So importantly here, why don't you grate okay. uh, or crack a lot of pepper in there right. because the pepe is the pepper. Uh, and without yeah. that, like it's not cacio e pepe, it's okay. not cacio e walnut. Mm -hmm. And more? also putting, yeah, more. Oh, the okay. Putting yeah. the pepper in. Did I hear in. what kind of oil you said yeah. you use? Extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive. Yeah. And, and why is the pasta water so important? So pasta water is really important because the oil and the pasta themselves with the cheese, things will melt, but they're never going to get creamy. So you really need that water. So let's see. How is our pasta? Let's it's give not it, quite done yet. Not but quite done. I don't know if we have time to we wait for it to finish. Drop one in here. Let's see. All right. So with the pasta water, the kind of brilliant thing that happens is it creates this like available liquid for the cheese to melt into oh. so fat like any emulsion fat and water like they need mm. they need both to be there in order to make something creamy how much water by the way mm. 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 pretty good, good? Yeah. Right, if cool. you want to do that Calvin's my noodle tester at home yeah. so. <laughs> that's kind of scooby doo yeah, yeah mm. totally um, I mean I feel like the water part is all a feel it is yeah I don't know I'm sorry I I'm usually like... scoop out and using the um, the measuring cup, You're you right. can take out a cup or a cup and a half, yeah. but something nice about using a strainer is that you don't dump the water first. So yeah. you right. kind of, if you need to go back, you can. But hot tip, if you forget about the pasta water yeah. and you use tap, oh, it's go. totally yeah. okay. fine. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, much. yeah. Um, put a cup in there. Let's dump the put pasta the right in the here. Okay. I like to build the whole sauce in something deep like this. Yeah, Ooh, beautiful. Good. Amazing. And, the cheese, is that okay? and then we're going, yeah, because okay. they're all going to end up in the same mm. place. So using something deep like this okay. gives Oh, you room yeah. to stir uh -huh. and toss and right. go and without. Then you're end up and with it makes something this like little exactly. Yeah. So I'll come that melts side. gradually. Yeah. You end up there over you here. Go. You guys definitely need to get it. in there. With pleasure. Dylan, Dylan loves this. Okay. This is her favorite. This is my Very favorite. Nice. I mean, I want to plan a trip to Italy just to eat cacio e pepe. And it should look really creamy and saucy. So with something rich and cheesy like this, I love a simple salad. This is my big batch vinaigrette. It's the vinaigrette I grew up eating. We always had a bottle of it on the counter. Really simple: mustard, olive oil, a couple kinds of vinegar. My mom always put balsamic and oh shallot. Gosh. Put it in the blender or the Cuisinart. You end up with this beautiful oh, concoction. Go ahead and swirl. And it's creamy. You can keep it in the you fridge. Make it look so easy. And then it's not a big deal to make a salad because your dressing is already mm. done. How long will this last in the fridge? The Many ma weeks in the fridge. Weeks? For right. sure, oh. 100%. I was yeah. oh, a yeah. fan of Cacio yeah. Pepe. This has definitely taken it up a notch. Uh -huh. Amazing. Thanks, yeah, it's Carl that well. little bit of crunch and, and the salt. crunch and the toastiness in the walnuts. Yeah. It's yeah. like what it needed. Oh, good. Well, Plus yeah. gar garlic. We what kind of wine would you recommend with this? Because I Actually something white and bright like a Friuli or something like that. Thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to check out her new cookbook. That sounds so good. Good. Trust me, it is. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. Joining us with budget-friendly meals that you can make for dinner tonight is an expert chef, Frankie Salenza. He's the host of the Taste Maid's hit series, Struggle Meals, where he creates gourmet dishes that will not break the bank. Frankie, you're just what the doctor ordered today. We need you. What are you going to make Hey, for I got us? all five of you. Good morning. Good morning, Hi. Frankie. Hey. Super cool. <laughs> what you going to make? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make a mushroom cavatelli pasta. Mm -hmm. So I can show you that real quick. Obviously, pasta is super affordable, but if you just go buy semolina, which is a high gluten flour, um, you can make pasta with just semolina and water. Ooh. Am I allowed to say gluten on air? Is that sure? Like yeah, no, you're okay. 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 So you can okay. do it. How so you literally just combine those, and then and then you can roll out sort of a snake here. Wow. Cut these up like this. Bing, 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 and then with your with your knife. You can just kind of windshield wiper. You oh, see that? Yeah. yeah. And you get these things called cavatelli 
because it means little hollows. And if you think of like cavity, for example, oh. the, you know, the Latin root cavity, cavatelli, cavity is a hole in your tooth. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, makes this whole thing budget friendly? So really, there's listen, there's a whole bunch of ways to save money. One of the biggest ones that people overlook because we live in the future and everything is available all the time is cooking in season. If you're cooking in season, it's not being transported long distance to get to you. Like, that's a great point. I don't know. Carson, would you go down to Argentina right now with the price of flights? Yes, I probably would. <laughs> if Jeff Blue went, would? I'm okay, there. well. But if I you get want your asparagus right now, it's yeah. coming from Argentina and right. you're paying for it to get on a plane flight. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. That's no good. No. So, right. right. Eat, Seasonal eat, selections eat, are for close. Example. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, a rag here. You just roast the beet. Mm-hmm. And hopefully this works because I did cook these last night. But essentially, if you just get a rag that you dedicate to this and, and use the friction of the rag, Wait, sort of this is the twist. Here. Yeah, oh. you twist the... You twist the beet inside. Uh-huh. Is a bird going to come get, out of there? Yeah. You see it like, what? Oh, what? what? Yeah, That's cool. a pro so, so beets are in season. They're a root vegetable. So is citrus. You can make a gorgeous citrus beet salad. Oh, can I ask a dumb cheese. question, Frankie? Is there like a website beets? or a place you could learn where things are in season? Like, I have no idea. I just go to the grocery yeah. store. Yes, exactly. oh, absolutely. I mean, there's this whole like thing that we have in the palm of our hand with all of mankind's knowledge and you can just say winter vegetables and you'll oh. find that it's <laughs> so root vegetables <laughs> yeah exactly right. cruciferous right. vegetables root it. vegetables right. citrus mushrooms i'm sorry i didn't mean to be no i deserve that's that right. it was dumb i told you it was dumb okay <laughs> we'll go back Frank, so, where, where, so where's that's the mushroom a, a beet salad real go ahead where's the mushroom come in on the pasta different dish so we've got our mushroom here I cooked them naked in the pan, Got it. and then I added some fat after. It's mm. sort of counterintuitive. You want to dehydrate a mushroom so that then you can infuse it with fat, which is flavor. Mm. So I cooked it naked in the pan. They naked. shriveled up. Water came out, mm. threw the butter and or olive oil in there. Yum. And now we've got, you know, we've got this mushroom. Okay, so there's mushroom. Yeah. Okay. That's the oh, thing. The mushrooms you go know? the cavities. And you're saying yeah, making your homemade pasta, that was, I mean, that was a good budget move too, right? It's a good budget move. Pasta's pretty affordable anyway, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. So, like, if you want to use a boxed pasta, mm-hmm. the thing is to just pair mm. it with in-season ingredients. I want to eat that. It's not that a problem at all. I love my hey, Frankie, does, yeah, you know, does I, homemade pasta, does it, does it change the cooking time? Yeah, it's a lot faster. So I put these in right at the start of the segment. They've got a self timer built in. They float to the top when they're done. Oh. If uh, if you see it, it Frankie, takes like you know between Frankie, two and three minutes. You're an A plus guest. We want to say thank you. Uh, yeah. you look great. You can find uh, res- this recipe at today.com/food and you catch Frankie's show. Check it out. It's called Struggle Meals. It's Thursdays on Tastemade. Thank you, Frankie. Come back at a person next time, Frankie. Come yeah. back, Frankie. <laughs>
We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's hey, an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up uh, yeah. early. What are yeah, we- what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very, very comforting. And it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's gonna be rigatoni. It's gonna be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rob and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce there as well. So I'm gonna start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta a la vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do we'll to it? Vo- What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps to emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, so, you, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the, with the hot Italian sausage. And then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce, I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So we're just gonna we're gonna cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm gonna add some fontina cheese to it. Yum! And this is all gonna go into a casserole dish. And mm. I love cooking things. I, you know, I call it oven to table, where you where you you know you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven proof dish like mm. this one. So Bobby, did, put- did you cook that pasta al dente because it's gonna be cooking longer in the oven? Yes, that's actually, Hoda, that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, the Bobby, oven, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there, it's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like you know, like when you have the lasagna and the and the, and the edges and the crispiness mm-hmm. around the side. What mm-hmm. you always want that part of it. You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for I don't know about 15 to 20 minutes. Because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to broil. Mm-hmm. Pour yourself up to and cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your uh, take out your your pasta, and you can see this is what it's gonna look like. I see. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope that's what I'm that's talking about. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make sure. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, Man, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take like take a little bit and just kind of kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that, nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. <laughs> But I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know. Does, your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> You guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in LA is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5:50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat. If you were a little more thoughtful. 
I was oh. actually crossing. You know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christi- Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So, Sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there. As well. <laughs> well, I think last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. And then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely you lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick, we, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because you know I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life, and uh, you know we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened a Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well, and uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm-hmm. some point. We'll be back there. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Hey, you can catch an all-new episode of Beat Bobby Flay tonight on Food Network. And get Bobby's recipes on our website, today.com slash food. The answer's gone when you need them most. let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Missy Robbins is a James Beard award-winning chef and owner of Lilia and Missy Restaurants. She's out with her second book called Pasta, the Spirit and Craft of Italy's Greatest Food. Missy's right here near us in Brooklyn, uh-huh. in her kitchen right now. Missy, by the way, you were a home run on the 8 o'clock hour. We're still talking about that breakfast pasta. Oh, we get uh-huh. it. No, we want it. We want <laughs> you to come make it for us. But for us, you're going to make... I, I will do that anytime I'm allowed. Yay. I love it. Okay, so you're making a broccoli pesto. This mm. is one of your favorites. Tell us why. Yeah, this one. This one's a little later than the last segment where we did carbonara, and I, I, I bragged about how rich it is. Okay. This one's a little later. Um, there's a few reasons I love this. One, it's it's got broccoli. It's healthy. It's I developed this when when I was trying to eat healthier and wanted to include more vegetables. And okay. how do I do that but still have a little pasta? So it starts with it starts with you can use broccoli. You can use broccoli rabe. In my in my recipe, I have both. Um, you kind of just separate the florets, the mm-hmm. leaves, and then um, blanch it, shock it, chop it. So that's a, a, just a quick cook. Um, and you end up with this. Um, and then the leaves and basil, you also mm. blanch and do a puree. Okay. Um, and then we use pecorino. Mm. We use parmigiano. So it's still so got the all yummy the stuff in there. Traditional, yeah, yeah, all the yummy stuff. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not like... You Can know, I ask diet. real quick about it's, that pesto? You was that a pesto you poured in? Is that what the basil was? That that was that was just a puree. Puree. Um, okay. And then this is olive oil, which will mm. kind of bind it all together. Mm. And then the gnocchi. One of the reasons I love them, I think, I think a you can make them ahead of time. You can you can make them. You can cook them ahead of time and hold them overnight. This is a ricotta gnocchi Ooh. that's uh, really foolproof. Yum. Like you, you cannot screw this up. So and, should you just and, not buy the, uh, you know, the frozen okay. ones and 
Do I need you to do the real thing? You should never buy. Never. Is that never, horrible ever. of me? Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Never. I won't buy the frozen ones anymore. <laughs> this is just so easy, and I, I love it also because it's great to make with kids. Mm. Really great to make with kids. It's an easy one. Um, I roll this dough out into ropes, you see, uh -huh. and then I cut them into pieces. Mm. And then if you want a little extra fancy, you go. Um, you want to make sure there's enough flour so they don't stick. The dough can uh -huh. get a little sticky. And we have this little paddle, very traditional uh -huh. gnocchi board. Um, and you just kind of roll it down uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. Also, like, really fun for kids, like great hand-eye coordination. Uh -huh. um, oh. And I know once, you, once you taste those, you probably can't go back. So I guess I can see that. Exactly. And, <laughs> and they're just easier than potato gnocchi. So I have them cooking in back. It's really hard. Like, with traditional pasta, egg pasta, it's so delicate. It's pretty hard to screw these guys up. <laughs> like, they, you want to cook them till they float to the top, but if they float and they cook another one or two minutes, you're okay. You're going to end up with something very, very light. That's okay. the other thing with these. There's a lot of cheese. Oh, um, I have my broccoli pesto on the Oof. stove here. Um, Yum. And, and, just, and, and it's got a little pasta water to loosen it up. So mm -hmm. pasta water is a really important ingredient when you're making pasta. It adds starch. It adds a little salt. And we just go right in the pan here. Coat it. And right. then how do you know when it's ready? Well, you're going to marry them together. Okay. So you're going to just toss, 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 mm. toss, mm. toss, until those gnocchi kind of absorb into into the uh, sauce, and the sauce absorbs into the gnocchi. Look and they you become flip. I was just going to say, mine would be all over the I'm floor. I'm just mesmerized so, right I now. mean, you should try it at home. We, yeah. You know, when we teach young cooks, we tell them to take beans home and, <laughs> and just flip beans okay. forever and ever. Oh. Um, and then we just go right here. Serve it up. Um, for the, Look at for that. the final plate. Oh, my gosh. I just want a fork right um, now. Mm. And these, these gnocchi, you know, in the, in the book, we have um, tons of recipes for different red sauces. The, that's like one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Missy, is, is just red sauce gnocchi. Missy, um, that is a that's a parm. ten plus. Look at that, Yum. a little more parm. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much, um, and we're so excited thank again. You. You're joining us from your Brooklyn kitchen, but you've got you're the owner of Lilia and Missy, the Missy. restaurants in New York. So thanks again. Yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Us too. For this recipe, go to today.com/food, and for Missy's book, you can head to today.com/shop. It's called Thank pasta. you so much. It is one of the longest running food shows on the Food Network. Folks love watching the up and coming chefs beat Bobby Flay, or at least they tried to. He's invited some fellow celebrity chefs to give it a go on his new show, Beat Bobby Flay Holiday Throwdown. And today, Bobby's going to throw down in our kitchen with some chicken parm. Everybody loves yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. Bobby, good to see you, man. Thank How you so you? much. Well, it's so good to be here. Um, it's holiday season. It is. Yeah. Do you, do you cook a big turkey for Thanksgiving? I do. I do. Uh, I, Thanksgiving is my. Um, it's my favorite day of the yeah. year. Actually, I'm going to be here next week. Um, oh, good. Oh, in the yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be a lot of food in this place. Okay, good. Oh, man. I'll, I'll be back then. I'll okay. be back. So we're going to make chicken parm. This is okay. a dish, obviously, I, I call this chicken parmigiano as opposed to chicken parmesan. It's a little bit cleaner version of, of the classic. And I just put this on my menu uh, in, in Amalfi in okay. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Okay, so a couple of things. You look like you're not going to cook. You got your hands oh, in your cooking, pocket. Dude. You want to do this? Oh, I okay. Love, let's okay. Press chicken parm. So chicken oh, cutlets. Okay. This is yep. this is classic. So, um, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, so, and so you set up a dredging station. You season every single. Um, oh, each of part them. of it. Okay, yes, exactly. Because otherwise it's bland. So you go. So the so the flour <laughs> to the. <egg. laughs> is that bad? I don't no, no. You're doing no, great. You, no, get in there, you right? can tell that Willie cooks. You he's he's in there. Okay. And then and then and then the eggs hold on to the panko breadcrumbs. Exactly. Ah, oh. And then you let that sit there That's for a second, a and we just Come put on. it in the oil. I'm actually using avocado oil more these okay. days than canola oil. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, they say it's better for you, so I say, okay, why not? Okay, so... Are people laughing at my cooking? I, don't I think know. I'm doing great. I don't know. What are they laughing you about? Get your hands dirty. Okay, so you want to make, yeah, make sure it's your hands. Really. So, so every every culture has their own version of chicken cutlet, right? So we have. Um, <laughs> 
I've lost them. Thanks for coming. No, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm with you. Okay, so then we, so every every culture has their version of chicken cutlet. Obviously, this is sort of an American Italian version. We're gonna make tomato sauce. Okay. I have three ingredients in my tomato sauce: onions, garlic, and then some and some crushed them crushed tomatoes. And I let this cook for about 45 minutes. How do you, you just oh you press them with the potato I, and masher? I, and first you let it cook for about 25 minutes so they soften. Okay. And then I crush them with a potato okay. masher so that it actually has texture. Yeah. Got and it. then I put like a little sugar. This is very controversial. Some people say don't ever put sugar in your tomatoes, but you know what? If they're acidic, you want a little sugar to yeah, bounce, why not? bounce it why out. Not? Okay. Okay. So then we have the chicken cutlet, and then I take some buffalo mozzarella. Mm, look at that. And I just put it right on look top. Look now, at that. now here's the thing that I do. You see, I leave some of the crispy bits uncovered because oh, yeah. we want that good contrast of texture. Crunchy, yeah. Exactly. We put it in the oven. I love this. I love this kitchen. You put it. You put it in this oven, and then it comes out of this oven Magic. right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So here it is. So then we take some of the tomato sauce, and, uh, and instead of dousing it uh, all over the chicken and then ruining that crispiness, I put the tomato sauce on the bottom. And the then, cheese is melted uh, on top, and then see, it's it's a, it's a much cleaner so version. Yeah, a little bit of nice. fresh basil and a whole bunch of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Look at that. May yeah. I start, Chef? Yes, yes you can. Okay. And then some fresh arugula because this is a very healthy dish. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of just olive, olive oil on top. And there we go. Mm. Let's sneak in here, Bob. Get in there. Let me Get try. In there. Get oh, Bob. Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm. So good. Yeah, Bob. I mean, see, so here's the thing. The really nice thing about it is you get wow. obviously the acidity mm. and the sweetness of the tomatoes. Mm. You get that crispy contrast, the mm -hmm. texture on the chicken, mm. and of course that fresh mozzarella. Is, and it is feels beautiful. a little light, which you can't always say for a chicken parm. Well, the thing about chicken parm, and you and I sort of share that that love of chicken parmesan, you know, where it's kind of doused in all that cheese and yeah. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But this is a, to me, this is like a, this is like a Tuesday night version of the Sunday night yeah. meal. There you yeah, go. exactly. I, um, did I hear you're in a movie? Wait, uh, what? Bobby Flay is in one let, delicious Christmas. Let me tell you wait, something. Come on. So I understand. I, yes, the come Oscar on. buzz has been so <laughs> overwhelming. Wait, wait. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking? Who do you play yourself? This is, I play, I play Tom Kingsley, who is, is a uh, a food critic. Yeah, uh, it's called One Delicious Christmas. Um, yes, they wanted me to act. I said. Don't do it, but they said please do it, so here it is. Viewing everywhere. There'll be viewing parties all Everyone's over the place talking about for it. one delicious Christmas. Exactly. Bobby, How do you really feel about a food critic, though? I love food life. critics. Okay. Yes, we love food critics. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. <laughs>
Let's oh, it really needs a Yeah, see how when towel. it's wet, it well, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like that. See, okay. Okay. okay, and then we can put put it in the pot. Okay. And you want it nice and brown, because that, that caramelization it, really makes a difference. Oh. Whoa, sorry, did I burn you? <laughs> no. I burned myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did burn but you. You know what I love? The first thing you said was, did I burn you, even though you were on fire? <laughs> we're, we're okay. <laughs> okay, everybody's No fire I alarms. I a national treasure. <laughs> So uh, this is going to brown, and then I'll turn it over and later. Okay. Okay. Are, are, are then, these leaks? These are leaks, and the thing That's about leaks, leaks it's, it's, I know. Good. First thing with leaks, you want to take the green part off because they're they're kind of tough. So just like that. Okay. And then you want to make sure that they're really really clean because they grow in dirt. Oh. So you don't want to let them get too. Um, you want to make sure they're really clean. Okay. So what you do is chop them up like this. Kind of fine. And then you know the, um, you do a lot and put them in water. And just let the sand come out of it. Oh, and then that's what you're doing. And then yeah. you take them out. I like how you clean you, everything. And you, yeah, you want to make sure you have to, right? And then you dry them. Do you know that them. are diuretic? They are? Amazing. Oh. That, yes. <laughs> Good to know. You no, know, anyone who's trying to lose weight always eats leek oh, soup. I had no Not idea. Kidding. Try it. Is that, that's, is that's that still a thing or yes. is that a 70s so fat? Forget no. the chicken, forget now. the carrots, just eat leeks. <laughs> okay. Make soup. Okay. okay. So leeks are delicious, though. We saute carrots and fennel and celery okay. and the leeks all in a pot like mm -hmm. this and then, then we're going to take that the chicken that so we browned. So you just browned it, right? Just That's browned all. it. Okay. All I did was brown it. Didn't cook it. Just because it looks yeah. better and it's and yeah. it's going to taste better. Put that brown Play chicken it. right oh, back in. It already in. smells amazing. So and then we, first we put in um, saffron. Saffron. Well, I didn't realize the that's what saffron crocuses. looks like. Isn't that, doesn't oh. that smell fabulous? That's mm. what it looks like. And it's expensive because it is the stamens of crocuses. What is a crocus? A crocus is a flower. Oh. An old flower. Did Chicken you know sock that? goes in. Did stamen of a crocus? <laughs> I didn't you, want to you'd, know, the... you'd know a crocus if you saw one. Okay. okay. So if you, you met pour, one, right? Pour so that you pour on. Pour that's just right. chicken stock? And then we're going to put water on. That whole water pot? Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is, it's going to cook in this pot. Yeah. And then we need salt and pepper. This is a great okay. kind of thick soup. Okay. You put it's, a lot well, in, it's actually right? going to end up being soup and orzo. So the orzo is going to okay. absorb all, all the liquid. That. So this, okay, now we have one other thing to What's flavor this? it. It's an herb bundle. So okay. I've got thyme, parsley. And you tie it. And, and you could put it in, but then you'd have to fish it all out. So, so you tie, so it. I tie it. I tie it. I tie it with a string. This so it flavors so it. Smart. And then you could take the whole thing out before you have serve you it. Have you ever made an herb bundle, Coda? <laughs> no, I'm so excited. Coda's made an herb bundle well, now. Oh my gosh. Right? The whole so thing that in. whole thing goes right in. And that in. just kind of flavors That's it. it. Now this goes in the top, oven. Oh, top on it or okay. not? Um, it goes in the oven with a lid. With a lid, okay. For um, at 350 degrees. Okay. And so it's going to. And then this is for about an hour. 15 minutes. An hour and 15 minutes. And then when this comes out, yeah. I put the orzo what you do is, is the take the orzo, orzo like a rice, and right? just, uh -huh. it's pasta actually, but oh. it looks like rice. Mm. And you just put the lid on. And do you cook it for again? 20 minutes? No, nope. and it just sits. Wait, you don't put it back in the oven? Don't put it back in the oven. Don't need to cook it. Can I sneak mm -hmm. over here? Come over here. What you end up with? And you end up with with soup and orzo, and it's it's not soup. It's dinner. And the oh chicken, my God. and you put the is chicken dinner. apart. Mm. Wait, does Jeffrey like this recipe? He loves it. <laughs> Anything that has to do with chicken soup, he loves. You know what oh else is in your book God. that we just what? have to mention? It's the biscuits. And my girl, biscuits have Dip to go it. with it. Oh God. Right? The biscuits. Yeah. Idea. Cheddar biscuits. They're pretty good, aren't they? They are the oh best biscuit I've ever had. The best one. audience in the world. Oh my God. <laughs> we love <laughs> you so much, you guys. And you can get this recipe at today.com/food. Oh my God. And check out Ina's new book. I bet a lot of people will go to dinners. It's a great holiday. They gift as well at today.com slash books. I know we love you. Time for one of our favorite Aussies, Chef Curtis Stone. The Michelin starred chef is taking a break from his two Los Angeles restaurants, Maud and Gwen, to whip us a California inspired dish. We miss you, Curtis. I know, I know. Curtis. it's so good to be back you're, in the city. You're a very busy, busy man. You're How making... are the restaurants? So good. Back? We are back. And the, you know, like it's been a tumultuous couple of couple of years, as we all know. There's no point complaining about it. You just got to no. get on with it. We've totally. kept our team get together, which is important. Um, and uh, and we're very happy and to the be kids back. Are good. Awesome. Kids so are good. good. Okay. So good. What are the ages of your kids now?
Hudson's 11, yes. and Emerson, my cheeky one, he's just turned 8. eight. 11 and 8? Yeah. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Remember when they were well, born? Well, Hudson turns 11 in a, in a week. Okay, okay. Right. so I like chicken thighs. I'm glad that's what we're doing. Mm. Yes. That's so, another thing we could debate on. Oh, yeah. Mm. I like a, a leg. Mm. Yes, le the leg is amazing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, especially when it's um, on the bone. So leave the skin on. Okay. I've seasoned them with salt and pepper. Yeah. One important thing to do with chicken is sit it on a tray and just dry it out for a little bit. Don't cook it wet because mm -hmm. that's when it'll spit and hiss out. You, oh. And we don't like spitting don't and hissing. Cook it. Okay. You so you it cook it with dry. the bone up in there. Oh yeah, leave the bone in because that gives you beautiful flavour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we're doing with our thighs is just seasoning them both sides, a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to cook it in a medium heat. You can see it's not too mm -hmm. savage. And then you let it sort of come up to, to look come how up beautiful and, get it in and crispy it looks. Right. And then what you do once you've got that golden brown is you add full. Well, I'll cut them in half, but don't you don't need to chop Are them down. Are those shallots? Shallots, exactly. So these the shallots. chicken's not cooked through, is it? It's just cooked on the top? Is it cooked You, you cook right it both now? ways and then what you do once you sort of get the shallots in there and get a little bit Shallot. of colour is you transfer it to ah, the to the pan. Okay. Right? So you come over here and on this um, beautiful big purple sheet tray that they found for you How guys. How cute is that? Yeah, today. It matches. I've even got purple shallots working. <laughs> do right? we, are they shallots or are they shallots? Well, it depends what part of the world you're oh, okay. from. So in Australia they're shallots. We call them shallots. Okay. But I'll say shallots. And do you call these a grape? They're grapes. <laughs> <laughs> so throw the grapes in two. And what you do, you, you cook them on the vine. So this is a very oh, simple this recipe. this is gorgeous. And throw the herbs over the top. I like this. I'll uh -huh. just stand back here, Jenna, and let you, you do all the work. Do you like apple picking? I love it. Oh. Yeah, okay. why? Thank you. Now, just her, her, just her argument is dead. She does not like it. She's <laughs> against it. <laughs> You're an anti-apple. How can you be against apple picking? I don't know. Exactly. Apple picking's fabulous. Okay. Uh, we go every year, actually, up near Palm um, Springs with my kids. Nice. They love it. Okay. Um, so, in here, I have some white wine. Okay. A little bit of thyme uh -huh. and a little bit of chicken stock, and you reduce it down. Right, okay. this is the sauce we're making now. Mm -hmm. So that's going to bubble and boil. What you do when you reduce something is you go from, let's say, a cup of liquid to a quarter cup of liquid, okay. but you keep a cup of flavour. So okay. you're intensifying the cool. flavour, and that's what's happened here. Uh, what what about flavor? adding right. the most important ingredient? Exactly, butter. little yes. butter. <laughs> <laughs> so the butter's to thicken, but also to flavour. So you take it off the heat. So wait, and what you is this you're it. making right now? This is, well, this, this is, is the sauce. 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 It's basically an emulsion of wine, chicken stock, and that mm -hmm. flavour of thyme. Mm -hmm. You whisk it, it's called monte a beurre, you're mm -hmm. thickening with butter mm -hmm. in, the, in the French, uh, mm -hmm. and while we let that melt. Mm -hmm. I just tasted a, a baked grape. They're Come kind on. of like a raisin. Uh, they are, they get yeah. a little more you intense try one? in flavour. Mm -hmm. I do. Get it, hold on. Thank you. And so then the idea here is you've got your grapes, those little crispy Ooh. herbs. Um, you're right. and you stick it all on the plate Grape? like this. They do taste like raisins. They're they a raisin. Little raisiny. I'm oh, sorry. And then of course that sauce that we've whisked together okay. that just gets drizzled over the top. You uh -huh. can finish it with okay. a little salt and pepper. Mm. Here I have burrata. Really beautiful. We love mm -hmm. burrata so much. Isn't it so mm. good? So it's mozzarella with a little mm. stretchy mm. towel. Look at that. How I just beautiful is that? It. Look at that. Right. Mm. So then it'll just start to ooze. Mm. All right. So this one's already started. Oh my God. And you put it with this. Beautiful French bread, which we love. Mm -hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? A little uh -huh. bit of baguette. Crunchy baguette. Don't and you? it's a very simple mm -hmm. dinner. It's a roast. It's a take on roast mm -hmm. chicken, but mm. very, very easy. By the way, very flavorful and delicious. Mm -hmm. I know. I feel like I'm going to make this. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis, so we nice love you, you for this recipe. <coughs> do you say I won't? <laughs> for this recipe. <laughs> but you want to. You do really no, want to. You're probably right. I probably won't. But it looks good. Okay, for this recipe, head to today.com slash food.
anytime a recipe gets passed down from generation to generation, you know it's got to be real good. And as we take aim to make your life easier this week, we are going to share that specific recipe with you. Okay, it is a roasted chicken and Come rice on. dish. It's been passed down from a mother to her son, and that son just happens to be <laughs> a Michelin starred chef. That chef is at his restaurant, Veranda, right here in New York City, Chef George Mendez. Hey, George. George. Hi. How Good are to see you? you again. We're so happy Live to see you. Live from Veranda. You. I love that. Oh my God, I know, sorry. Veranda's close to my neighborhood. I gotta come visit. Yeah, definitely. Get in here. Okay, Let, let's to. talk about let's talk about your mom's recipe, okay? Because a recipe oh. has to be this good to be passed down. What is it about this specific one? It's these are flavors that I grew up with in my childhood. My mother used to cook rice dishes for my sister and my dad a number of times a week. Sometimes it was chicken. Sometimes it was rabbit. Sometimes it was a tomato rice. So. That cooking has had an enormous impact in my career. So, you know, she spent time with the kitchen with me uh, at many of my restaurants here at, at Veranda. Um, and she's an enormous inspiration for everything that I cook with and create um, very, really rustic childhood home style flavors. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think chicken and rice sounds like the mm -hmm. perfect dish for us mm -hmm. to cook tonight. So let's get started. Yeah. Tell us what yeah. we need to cook. So so I am on the uh, over medium heat. I have a cast iron skillet, oven proof, olive oil, onions, garlic, mm. right? A pinch of salt right away to get things started. Salt starts to release the moisture, so it's about that base of flavor. Mm. And then I'm going to get paprika going in there and some sweet peppers. Great from the farmer's market right now, this time of the year. Please visit your local farmer's market. More olive oil. I'm sure my mom right now is saying, add more olive oil. <laughs> there we go. You can also add like a pinch of chili flakes as well. No rules here. Mm -hmm. hey, George, are you a, are get you that a, nice are aroma. You a, are you, you a dark meat guy home. or are you a dark meat guy or a light meat guy? I like both. Yeah. I like the combination of both. Okay. When it comes to Thanksgiving, though, dark meat for sure. Okay. How about you guys? Oh, I like, well, we, we differ on this. I like that. Oh, likes dark. I like yeah. light. Okay, so once Good. you do all that, do we add the chicken? What's the next step? Next step is we're going to add the rice oh. here. So that's And it's uncooked. a bomba or a colostro rice. It's a very short grain rice. Really important because it absorbs a lot of the flavors of the chicken broth. Yum. Is that uncooked and the rice or is that cooked rice you dumped this, in? This is uncooked. This is uncooked. Oh. And it doesn't need that long to cook? It's going to need about 20 minutes in the oven, but of course I have one ready for you to show you. Okay. okay. And then at this point, I'm going to add the chicken meat. So the chicken meat I have right here that's pretty done. This was cone feed and olive oil really slowly for about 40 minutes. It's skinless, bone in uh, thigh. Uh, and then we take the meat off of the bone and pull it. Just like if you're doing pulled pork, you're doing pulled chicken. And that's in here right now. If we buy, you know, if, if we maybe don't have as much time, do you just buy the rotisserie chicken and, yeah. and Cut it shred out. it, shred it? Only, only if you don't have enough time. But okay. with some he organization and a little bit of patience, you can you can do this at home. I okay. promise you. Okay. okay. Promise you. Promise right. you. What's the next step? Chorizo. Mm -hmm. Those in there. All right. And then I'm gonna add. So it's about one cup of rice, and I'm adding about one and a half cups of broth. I'm using a roasted chicken broth. You can also use a vegetable stock. If you don't have that, you can use water. Okay. Just make sure it's nicely seasoned. Yeah, look And at that, that goes in carefully like so. Okay. So this is, this is a one-pot dish. It's that's almost a like a paella. Dish. Yeah. That's right. The only difference is this just goes in the oven. Paellas cook on the stove top for the most part and traditionally over a live fire. Okay. So do we pop but, that baby in the oven now? That's right. So at this point, I got a 400 degree oven mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go right off behind me. Good job okay. staying center. Nice. And there you go. How long does that cook? That's gonna cook about eight, well, so 20 minutes, I'm sorry. 20 minutes. Um, there are, we are have options there at the restaurant where we pre-cook it just for speed. Um, at home, you can do the same thing. You can have par cooked rice. Um, so that you can speed up the process as long as you have the chicken. The beauty behind this is it's a chicken confit. It's, it's a traditionally um, done with duck 
cooked as well. Uh -huh. And you can hold this in your fridge up to a week. Wow. So this whole step with your your chicken thigh, you need to do ahead, right? You can you can preserve it in your fridge. George, will and you then if you really want to. Sorry, I didn't Go mean ahead. to interrupt you, but will you show us that final That's delicious okay. rice yeah. dish? How do you serve it up? What else do you, do you add anything else to it? Yeah, so I have sliced chicken breast that's also yeah. cooked very similar to the chicken thigh. That's poached in olive oil with thyme and bay leaf. Uh -huh. And then once the oven comes, the uh, oven is, the time is done, the rice comes out of the oven, I slice wow. the chicken breast over the top. All right. And here you go. That looks, looks delicious. Gorgeous. George, thank you thank so you George. much for this recipe. Head you to today.com slash food. <laughs>
a lot of times we're running short on time during the week. I'm going to give you the easiest, fastest recipe you've ever seen. Um, we're going to use a store-bought cake mix, oh. and we um, use German chocolate cake mix. I've already made that with um, evaporated milk, and what you do is mix the melted butter. Cook off half of it, okay? So just half. You're going to put that in the bottom, and then we're going to top it with chocolate chips. We add our caramel. Mm. And then once that's done, you smooth that out. And then you come back over with the rest of that topping that we had put in the fridge. And you just thin it out. It's almost like you're going to make a tapestry to cover the entire thing. This is going to go back in the oven on 350 degrees. And, honey, you have got a dessert that is Can going I ask to one make question? Elizabeth looks yummy. Yeah, so do you Look actually... At Wait, Look do you, at those It brownies. looks crazy. Do you mix the cake mix like you're making a cake the way that they tell you? No, you don't. So it's just the cake mix. Just, just the Just melted powder. butter oh. and evaporated oh. milk. Oh. And then you mix that up. So that's where we're taking a shortcut. And I'm not embarrassed to say it because I want your kids to have dessert tonight. And, um, and this is a way that you can do that. So this book has literally, it has recipes mm -hmm. for celebrating everything. So whether it's a beach day, I've even got a chapter on diet days. Where are we going to make that fun? That's probably a <laughs> short chapter. we got a cheat day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got cheat days. We have beach days, party days, Delta days. Um, so Love please it. go ahead. Do you have Fat Tuesday? <laughs> yes, Fat Tuesday. Absolutely. That's going to be in the next book. All right. But you know, with um, I've got three kids. Uh -huh. Two of them are in college, and I've got one going on the way. And they really like expensive shoes, and we got to sell this book. Elizabeth. It comes out May 4th. So look, Mama Melville, I know she wants a copy. <laughs> and this will be right before Mama's Day. So, Craig, get on that, get yeah, on that phone as I, soon as this it, yes, segment's over and let's get that He's on it. Yes, All right, you can pre-order that copy of Come On Over. Just go to edtoday.com slash shop. And to get your hands on those recipes, those two at least, check out today.com slash food. Elizabeth, we love you. Yeah. Good luck in the book. Well, honey, I, I cannot thank you all enough. Cheers. Cheers. Right, Come on, on over. <laughs> Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? We are so excited to get started with cooking and today food. But before we do, before we do that, we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes, producer. Talia is in the house. We just want to say, hey, welcome Happy to today. Happy first day. It's her first day of school. Go, Talia. We're so happy thrilled. you're here. She's here. And you know who else we're so happy to have? Oh. Well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family. Reed's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best-selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Hi, we're so missed happy you you're guys. here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends, and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, Love it. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, How sweet. thank you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was. we did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We <laughs> sort of built this huge tent out there, but it was fun. And the, the great thing is, it was a lot of work, but the day of, we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you do any, did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good. You just no, relaxed. No, no, no. Sure. I know. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun, yeah, right? to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's, he's <laughs> doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything's okay, great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very All right. All right. Are we going to Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know. cake you know today, what? Um, that is really good. Why was everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have supported me. Out, it was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> <laughs> but you 
you should I, see what she does to chips. Oh, I well, you know, <laughs> you know it's morning. It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So will. after the cake, I thought it would be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So. My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy wait, it. Throw it in there. Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just gnocchi. did? You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan. Everything on the sheet I pan. I thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh just... no no no! Because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've that, got pesto. Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh. Did I'm trying not to get pesto on you, so I moved it away from your beautiful white Can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything. So yeah, she's speaking happened. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, I, I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah, so they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and, and you know, And do you need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh, my gosh, Jenna. we have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So. I like to do a little balsamic Do you want us to hold oh, yes, yes, help me and there grab some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that, I love balsamic glaze. Yes. Yes. everything do, on anything. And you know what, I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what, what is that doing? smell? This so, is kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this, but. Wait. We could do this too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven, is dress this basil? it. basil? What did you what is that? I tore basil. Oh, tore basil. Just, yep. And I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. You just chop <laughs> it. By the way, I, I like it. Exactly. Oh, the should we go around the back? Yeah, we have another recipe. Okay, okay great. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast. Any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata what squash. What is that? I'm, I'm obsessed know, what is it? with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah. Mash, mash yes. it up. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just so a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's and basically store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. So ah. butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not do, very tasty. Yes. Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do pepper. another roasted vegetable situation: salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. Why and then just so toss. Brilliant. But here's what's fun about what? it: so roast it, and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own. But I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So basically, you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I doctor up bottle dressing. So. But I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. And the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And then, isn't it pretty? Ten okay. plus. Ten plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. seeds. Yep. Mm. Yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranates. Mm. So this I love is, pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Wait. doesn't love. Wait, thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a thank lot of TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. Bree, thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. Contributor and chef Alejandra Ramos is here with comfort foods mm. to warm us up as it gets cold. And if you want to cook along with us, just scan the QR code to order all of these ingredients in just one click. Select Get Ingredients and then schedule a pickup or delivery. You can do that today. Dylan, right there. That's great. Right there. That's great. Person. Alejandra, this smells so delicious. Thank I you. love hot pies, especially when you can work in you know, yes. some extra veggies. Although this mushroom kind of freaks me it's out It's kind of fun, bit. right? Yeah, it's a yummy it. one. It's a yummy mushroom. What's great about this is you can use any kind of mushroom. So you can use the classic button mushrooms mm -hmm. or go for something a little bit fancy like an oyster or mm. shiitake. You can get the mix. Mix it up. Yeah, and so all you want to do is you kind of want to do a nice little rough chop on these, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. have to be anything. They break down perfect. quite a bit when you cook they them. They break down a lot. So you're using, you're going to see it's all these mushrooms are going to go in there, okay. but that heat is going to pull out all of that water. Okay. Uh, also, when you're adding, you know, like a little bit of olive oil and salt, that pulls out all that water. So okay. What do you have in here? Here is just we've got some carrots, some onions, and some celery. Basically, mm -hmm. the base of your dish. Then you add your mushrooms in, right? And I'm okay. going to cheat. I'm not going to do all of them right mm -hmm. now because. It, it does need time to cook yes. down. And then once those mushrooms cook down a lot, 
then you add the garlic. You I think I've overcooked it. my yes. garlic because I well, think I've been yeah. putting it in with it. Exactly. You don't want to do the garlic at the top because then it can burn and it yeah. can get bitter and then that flavor is going to be yeah, in the whole uh, the dish. And, right. Okay. And chef, this is like very hearty, right? So it's good for fall. Yeah, it's a great fall dish. And what I love about it, it's like mushrooms are. They're meaty, right? So they're mm. really satisfying. And I love that they're just really filling. And you can add other things to it, too. So if you've got leftover rotisserie chicken or you want to add a little bit yeah. of Italian sausage to it, go ahead and do that. I love it vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. And it's all in one pot. Once too, the veggies nice. are cooked, you add some flour. This is oh, going to help thicken it. I was wondering. It. Yeah, so that's what it is. That's going to thicken it. So okay. it's, uh, fill sure. in. You want to give it like a little bit of a mix there. All right, so then flour. We're doing some chicken broth. Chicken broth. Oh. And then you can do, this is optional, but you can do a little, um, like a little sherry. Or or a little brandy. Oh, okay. It adds a nice flavor to it, right? Mm -hmm. And this is just going to great. Ooh, this smells great. For, I mean, it already smells yeah. great, right? It, does, it yeah. smells like fall. It smells it like cozy okay. times. Uh, and then you're going to add some great herbs. Okay. So here we've got some chopped up rosemary, some mm -hmm. sage, some thyme, all those wonderful winter herbs. And then this is my little favorite trick. Mm. Is so this? this is nutmeg. Okay. A whole oh, nutmeg. Okay. You can buy the ground. I was ground. just buy it in the thing. I know. You can do I mean, yeah, totally go for it. And it lasts forever. It's fun. You like grate it in. That goes right in. Okay. And it adds this wonderful little sort of touch of like subtle warmth to it. Oh, we got a minute left. We got yeah, okay, so it gets really nice and thick. And then you put your puff pastry right on top. Everything is in the Can pot. We try this? Cook it in. We try Please this? try it in. Yeah. Talk, talk to us about, about the dessert pastry. too, though. Just pop so the it same, top. same yes. pastry? Exactly. So, yeah. So then over here, now I've got a dessert version. So you can use oh either store bought pie crust or puff pastry. Okay. And this is an apple pie empanada. Oh I grew up Ooh. eating empanadas for everything. We basically just put everything in dough. Yeah. Uh, right? You've taught <laughs> No, no, I was going to say, and this dish is like, think of a McDonald's. Apple pie, but yes, way that, better. Exactly. Very similar. Very yes, similar. Exactly. Oh so there you go. It's okay. like a little. It's the a McDonald's apple pie with a Latin twist. To another next level. Doesn't it just? It just totally elevates oh those goodness. flavors. It's good. Yeah. And, and chef, I, I just have one question. Yeah. It's okay to cook with bling, right? It's <laughs> okay. I was I was watching you go. I was watching you go. Going. I love this. This yeah. is great. You know. You know. I, I bring my bling everywhere. She does something cool in the kitchen. Self to work. That's what I do. digging into some of the New York Times most popular recipes. That's right. More than a thousand dishes and drinks dating all the way back to the 1850s can be found in the one-of-a-kind mm -hmm. book, The Essential New York Times Cookbook. Amanda Hesser is a former food editor at the Times and the founder of The Food 52. She spent years trying and tasting all these recipes. Tough job, Amanda. Amanda, how, job. On earth, tough, yeah. how on earth yeah. did you ever narrow it down, my gosh, with all those recipes? Well, I talked to readers. Yeah. I, mean, I asked readers what their favorites were. Yeah. The Times helped me, also fellow writers. So I, you know, I, I took a lot of opinions. Show the book. Hold it yeah. up. It's a okay. I mean, Well, it's too heavy. It, I mean, this is like, okay. It's about a thousand. It's just short of. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's got it all. It's got it all. All right, but you, yes, okay. you, you pick these two, so, by the way. Well, yeah. so these are some of your these, favorites? Yes, and in, in the new edition. And so this is a uh, spicy beef stir fry, and it can mm. be as spicy as you want. Okay. Um, so the first thing you do is you want to um, mm -hmm. grind uh, garlic and um, chilies to a paste. If okay, you don't, mash if you, it up. Yes, if you don't have a mortar and pestle and you're going to add yeah. them to the oil. Oh, I like the sizzle. Uh, you can just do it in a food processor. Okay. Um, okay, and so if you well, are not, if you... 
turn of the century <laughs> style here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Actually, yeah, so that would be great. But let me um, mm. scrape more of this out. Right. I know it's really good. fragrant. The whole fish is already super fragrant. Okay. okay. All right. So you, you, as soon as that starts getting nice uh, and fragrant, yeah. you don't yeah. want it to brown. Mm. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to um, add. Actually, you know what? Let me we're going to we're going to add that. We're going to add the. Nope, not yet. That's okay. that's some chicken <laughs> stock. But I'm going to turn this up because we want to. Do you want, to, add, do you want to add the beef? Yes, okay. I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. Do I'm going to do it with this. Right, okay, do I'm in. I'm so what here. kind of beef did you pick? This is tenderloin, tenderloin. and you want to slice it nice and thin so mm -hmm. that it cooks really quickly. Uh, I'm going to, this is chicken stock I've got okay. here. You mm -hmm. want to add some things here? I would love to, yeah. Okay, great. So this is oyster sauce, you soy sauce. Right, just add it all in. Yeah, into that or into no, the, into here. here. Okay, okay. Oyster sauce. Oyster sauce. Yep. Yep. And then, and then you're gonna—it's a little sticky. That's okay. And Fair then enough. soy sauce, yep. and then fish sauce. Yum. Okay. And that, you can just oh, pour umami. that right in. It's like yes, it is. Mm. And then you've is that got, enough, or should I put? Al, how is it over there? More. You're doing oh, great. This done. is fantastic. Did you eat so yours this already? That's <laughs> about. Listen, it has. That's why Hoda's leading in the segment because we can't let her eat it. You know what? That is not kind. Say goodbye. Eat the whole thing. So this is light brown sugar. If you can get palm sugar, use that. You want to give that a little whisk. A little whisk. Yeah. And how long do you cook this? Okay. You know what? It looks super quick, right? Yes. You want to? It's a very quick dish. Quick, quick, quick. You want to add? Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah. So you basically want to coat the beef with the with the Cooking got fat, it, which got is it. vegetable oil. You okay. just use a neutral now, oil. Now, when do we pour in Carson's? Pour, you, go, Carson's. Carson, is this go, like Carson. a modern walk? Yes. Just, yes. Ah, this looks it's sort yummy. of a modified walk. So you okay, let that. So, so now we're going to let that okay. cook, and okay. you're going to just cook the beef through, uh -huh. and then you're going to add, this is McFruit lime leaves, which are oh, super. Have you, you ever smelled these? you got to no. smell these. Can I smell? Wow. <laughs> They're really amazing. That is fragrant. They're really amazing. Can I smell? Okay. Try this, Hoda. All right. So you're going to add those. It's just rice and... Okay. Oh my God. Um, mm. So you want to just, right, oh right, 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 right. And then you're going to add basil leaves. I just stopped leaves. listening. It's okay. so good. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. That's All right. So give that a toss, ever, right? and then that is it. Mm. Yes. That's okay. the dish. And you want to serve it over yeah, rice. Amanda. We're going to move over here. Delicious. All right. Yeah. What okay. is this rice? That's got a risotto almost. Amanda. Okay. So this, um, and and um. Uh, okay, well, I'll get back to that. But so this okay. this recipe is by Amini Ramachandran, mm -hmm. and it's um it's called uh, it's a mm -hmm. Southern Indian dish, and it's called curd rice. So mm. can I put you to work again? Oh man! Okay, Come sorry. On. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, put, you gotta uh, okay. uh, put the this is yogurt, yogurt and, and rice, co cooked rice, and you just want to mix Dump it, it up, in? and you want to serve it. It's actually served cold. Wait, what? Okay, great. Wild. So we've got. We've got some oil in here, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. oops, did I just break this? Okay, mm -hmm. probably okay. not. Okay, great. Uh, and, <laughs> okay, so you want to okay. heat the oil, okay. and and then you're going to add mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the black mustard seeds. And as Th soon as that's Greek yogurt in the rice, is that what it is? Yeah, you can use you whatever dump kind yogurt of yogurt in. Yeah, yeah you can right. yeah. use you know any kind of yogurt you like. You can use oh, labneh. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, okay, so just stir it up. Okay, it's um, already ready. All right, and then as soon as these start popping, mm -hmm. the, mu the mustard seeds, we're going to add um, uh, ura dal and chana dal mm -hmm. and, and cashews. Right. So I'm going to add what those. We're basically just like toasting the spices and making them fragrant. And can you, Al, saying if you don't have these readily available, can you kind of just use your sp spice that you prefer? Oh, yeah. You, mm -hmm. I mean, you you could, yeah. Okay. You could use probably any, I mean, any spices that you like. You yeah, that. I know, but, <laughs> but I'd have some spices. It won't be the recipe, really. but yeah. how do you it's navigate this thousand-page book? Is this separated by chapters? Is there like a chicken oh. chapter? Or no? As you can say, I see, I've, I've I mean, just added a lot of sticky notes. I mean, how do you want people to... Uh, so it's, okay, it's, it's, oh, yes, it's like chicken, desserts, salads. It's organized pretty traditionally. Okay, that is delicious. But then the recipes in the chapters are organized chronologically. What's the crunch So that you can kind of see... Whatever you put in there. All right, so now we're adding... I'm going to add freshly, uh, we're going to add some chilies. Ooh, a little chilies there. Let's, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, that's actually, you want it. Hey, man, we're kind of out of time. Again, I think okay. we're wrapping it up. Okay, all right. No, what are you all right. wrapping it up? What's the wrapping it up? Okay, all right. Woo, we have okay. to go. Well, this is okay. getting very exciting. The Essential New York Times cookbook. Okay, all right.
Best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins. It has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Ooh, hey, Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. Kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up, and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I heard some people massage the kale. Do you, mm -hmm. did you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, are, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are are sauteing and to that I'm gonna add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic and that is going into some lentils also called dal which we'll make in a minute but I just want to get that going um, so it browns and cooks nicely to that I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric you see that I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful yeah. salad. Ooh. With a mozzarella? Chickpeas. Ready on today's show uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season. It's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, the mm. mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just <laughs> olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling, frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. That What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the, um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, you also love the, don't you love the kale? Because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yum. I love Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yum. basically... But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. Thank you, Pod. Uh, we we got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food.
one of our favorites is with us, Gabby Dolkin. She's a chef creator of the popular What's Gabby Cooking blog. She gained a huge fan base, nearly 900,000 followers on Insta alone. She's got a new cookbook, Take It Easy. It's filled with no fuss, crowd-pleasing recipes. Gabby, you've been at this for 13 years. you got four 13. cookbooks. you got a baby daughter. And now you're taking it. Easy. Yes. I like that. What is yeah. this like part of the part of life that you're in right now? Well, I just feel like post COVID, you want to have everyone yeah. around your table, and it doesn't matter what you're putting on as long as it's flavorful. Flavorful. It's about like having people around your table and being happy. I love that. So you're talking about a kind of a hamburger helpery kind of meal. So what do we start with? So I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, and it gets Wait, cold. Wait, like, what? I know. Yeah. You I know. Have, have we have, talked about we this? We have. It's okay. like my favorite place in America. Okay. But we would make okay. this when it was cold for like the four days of oh, the year. It's cold. Days. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little chilly. We okay. get very excited when it it's dips it. below 70. Yes, it's truly an exciting day. But right. so instead of buying it from a box, we're just making it from scratch and like okay. packing even more flavor in here. So what do you got ground beef. First thing, we're just gonna saute some ground beef and like let it really spread out so it, it can are you get. Putting it in oil or anything or just oil. Okay, and we're gonna want to like really brown it and then we're okay. just gonna add some seasonings in there. What's so that? We've got some smoked paprika. We've got some oregano. We'll season it with salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna like toast those spices. Okay. And then. We can dump that into this bowl Just right dump here. Dump that into that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to show you how to dice up an onion with this very sharp knife and try not to slice. Should I leave this on or turn it off? Yeah, no, you can leave it on because all the like oh. remnant spices in there. Okay. We're going to add some onion in there and just sweat it out. You want to throw the rest of these spices what is this? in there. What's so going it's on more here? oregano, more paprika. In here? Yep, in okay. there. And Garlic. Then, Right, no garlic, uh -huh. and, and then the rest of the smoked paprika, okay. and we're just gonna put the onion so in there I'm just as cooking well. Spices. Yeah, right we're now. toasting them up, and then we're gonna add the onion right in and just okay. like let it sweat. Okay, so now Saute that's happening. It, and that's gonna be like the base of the flavor. Okay, and then so over happens? here, this is what happens when it's already cooked. Nice okay. job turning You're it off. Welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna thicken this up a little bit mm -hmm. and add some flour. Okay. And then while I do that, we're gonna toast the flour, cook it off, and you'll stir in the beef broth. Just beef broth. Okay. Yeah. So we're cooking. So the ground beef is still not. Here. The ground beef we're gonna add in. Actually, we grab it because we need it for this next step. So the the pasta is like oh. hard, like it's it's not oh, cooked. It's gonna, cook in the pan. it's gonna cook uh, in the broth uh, with uh, some tomatoes. Take a long time. Listen, you, just, what, one crushed? last pot, crushed tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, whatever. It's gonna cook a little I bit more. I love how you don't care. Just put it in. No, that's see, that's why it works. It easy. And yeah. then take it easy. once this cooks a little bit more, we'll add the beef now, back can I ask in. Now, question: Are you putting a lid on this and letting it boil? Hundred percent. You're gonna let it boil, and the steam that's made. Is going to help uh, cook the pasta. And then you add the ground beef. Correct. Stir it all together. Continue okay. seasoning it, it with salt and pepper. Mm. And then this is what it's going to look like look over at here. That. I know. Creamy, I know. delicious. So we're look at extra. The cheese. Yeah. Look at that block what of is that? What kind is that? Parmesan. Oh. We've got some look cheddar. At, oh. What are you doing? Some cheddar. And That's all like the mac cheddar. It's cheese. heavy cream. Heavy this girl. is why it tastes so good. Heavy girl, this is how you make it. It's really quite extra. And we'll add the beef back in here. Oh, wait. Not the beef for like a turkey or turkey, a chicken? Turkey, tofu, no. chicken. Why bother? You've already put no. cream. I mean, what are you trying to save on Look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. It's an aggressive dish, but it's so good. you the whole thing you, in the oven? You could, but like you don't girl. have to. Oh, what go you ahead. What you do is put like some taco seasoning you in there. Speaking of the Southwest. taco shells and put it on top. Wait, too. what? Tucson Hamburger Helper. Yes. I mean, we're oh just. Oh my God, that is so thick. Is it yummy? Yeah. It, it's it a is, nice, like, like easy weeknight meal. And, yeah, oh you can make this other, in, like, what, 20 what's minutes. What's your other favorite recipe in your book? Oh, my God. The fried chicken sandwiches are truly okay. phenomenal. Wait, that. what do you mean? They're just like, it's the best brine. It's the best fried chicken. There's all these amazing sauces on it. Pickles, it's so... I mean, I love every recipe yeah. in the book. They're like all my baby, like yeah. it's a baby. I, I, grew, I birthed that thing. How, but your, how old's your baby, by the way? Poppy is one and a half. Wow. Don't you hate when someone grills you and you're, you're doing I'm it. I'm like, I don't <laughs> know. Oh, <laughs> ah, there she so is. She's very by. cute. Guys, you can get a copy of that great book, Take It Easy Today, uh, dot com slash books. Find a recipe at today dot com slash food. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. Uh -huh. Great. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking. Man, yeah, Who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie.
Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. A walk through New York's Chinatown is a food lover's dream journey. Our first stop, a grocery store. This is such a pure window into a thousand-year-old culture and cuisine. Our guide is Francis Lamb, writer, publisher, and host of The Splendid Table on public radio. Anywhere you travel is you go to the market. You go see what people shop for. You go see what people eat. You go see what's important to people. Lamb's mother shopped here, as have generations of Chinese. For here is a wall of ramen. I am probably 45% by body weight noodle. There are all these different noodles, rice noodles, Thai style, Japanese style. But the dried foods are the pride of Po Wing Fong Food Market. Delicacies. These are dried abalones. Pricey. Oh, they're wild, 220 bucks a pound. Delicious. It right. doesn't taste like a fresh oyster. It just tastes like the evil superhero version of an oyster. Like, it's just darker, <laughs> moodier. You know, it's like Batman. Sophia Sao is in charge here, but it's her mother who has been behind the counter for as long as anyone can remember. What does it mean to you to follow in your family's footsteps to, to be running this store now? For me personally, I like to think that I'm continuing their legacy. So I think that I'm not only just helping my family financially, but also the community. Hang around a grocery store long enough and you'll get hungry. What's our next stop? I want to take you to the second coming of a classic tofu shop that was sort of more in the heart of Chinatown. Inside, we watch the modern day version of the ancient alchemy of tofu. Paul Ong is the proprietor of Fong An Tofu Shop. It's starting to coagulate, and so now I'm going to cover it, and yeah. it will set, kind of like, a, like jello. The finished product, though, the texture of silk on your tongue. Serve sweet or savory. But you have that really, really creamy pudding. You get, like, the crunch of that shallot, and you get, like, the little crispiness of the pickles. We tried both. It's really one of those where's this been all my life sort of taste experiences. On we wandered, wanting to stop everywhere and taste even what we did not recognize. She said you can eat it raw if you want. What do you think? Oh my God, this is so good. It's like a, if a cucumber and a pear had a baby. The energy in Chinatown is palpable but life here is not what it once was. In January of 2020, yeah. people stopped coming to Chinatown because it was the China virus. Many a store shuttered, some permanently. It's the economic devastation that we felt all over the country, but you layer on top of that a rise in hate crimes, a rise in racist rhetoric, a rise of scapegoating. It's rough, man. It's rough. Yet people persevere, and perhaps no place better represents that than our last stop. Waiyan, Chinese fine dining. Chef Shen Lei Tang, son of the original chef, holds forth in the kitchen. Among the specialties, sesame noodles. It's killer, right? Yeah. It's like a little bit of garlic, a little bit of scallion. But you can taste everything, and every flavor kind of comes and goes. 
Honestly, I've, I heard, okay, we're going to go have cold sesame noodles at this really <laughs> fancy restaurant. This, it's like this Great, exceeds, yeah. exceeds my expectations. Far exceeds. The shredded beef, best I've ever had. And the key? How come your food is so much better than everybody else's? Cooking from your heart. Cooking from your heart. That's Cooking fantastic. from your heart, Perfect. right? What a Cooking beautiful Isn't that the truth? Story. But Chinatown, it's, it just it, the life is on the street there. Mm. Yes. You just feel the vibrancy as you walk around, and you kind of go, what's that? What's this? Stop in here. Stop in there. Taste a little of this. Taste a little well, of I'm that. I'm glad you did that, because some of us, we want to go, but we just don't know what we're buying or what to look for. Like right. that one thing that looked like a cucumber. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing was Francis didn't even know what it was. Really? That was the coolest was part. Was it sweet? It what well it was taste like a lemon and a zucchini and a cucumber huh. all at the same wow. time. I'm going to Fong Ung for tofu. Yeah. That looks oh, amazing. That looks oh, amazing. Oh, phenomenal. Great, yeah. Food is typically somebody's first introduction into somebody else's culture. For the past several years, chefs Tim Ma and Kevin Tian have been bringing people to the table, literally. It's not just going and getting dumplings or bun mi. It's okay now that you're at the table. How can we expand our conversation? to learn about someone else. But their start was decidedly less glamorous. Wait, wait, wait. You bought a restaurant off Craigslist? Yeah. Like, literally, I was that inexperienced at opening restaurants. I mean, I I bought a couple of things on Craigslist, but never a, never a restaurant. Now, Tim's a high-profile chef in Washington, D.C., giving his take on Chinese takeout at Lucky Danger, while Kevin focuses on contemporary Vietnamese cuisine at Moon Rabbit. But as violence against the Asian community increased nationally, Tim and Kevin knew they needed to use their culinary skills to combat it. What did you come up with? We started with one dinner here in Washington, D.C. with five Asian American chefs raising money with this one to-go dinner because of the pandemic. And then overnight, Kevin and I decided, let's see how big we can get. And so we called our friends and texted our friends overnight, and we were at 45 chefs and nine dinners the next day. The duo laying out a schedule and launching a website overnight, and chefs stopping AAPI hate was born. What was it like when you realized this thing sold out as quickly as it did? That tells us that people are paying attention to the issues at hand. People want to help, they want to make change. So far, they've raised at least $122,000, donating to organizations fighting racism and violence. You have this event, it's supposed to be a one-time thing, but you realize you need to keep it going. How come? For us, it's all about continuing to spread awareness and amplify the voice for as long as we can or as loud as we can. For Kevin and Tim, it's deeply personal. I immediately thought about my parents in those the fuzzy videos of security footage, I can't tell the difference between that person and my parents. And so that's where it, it kind of hit home. And for both chefs, it's a reminder that we haven't left the past behind. It wasn't safe to play in our front yard growing up in California. People would come by and say things like what they perceived to be like uh, an Asian language or they would like throw, throw things at us. I was born in Arkansas in the 70s one night my sister and I were sleeping in our bedroom. Something came through the window, shattered the entire window. We didn't find out it was a brick until the morning. Today, a few months after Kevin and Tim's first dinner, the program's already launched nationally with events set from San Francisco to New York. And right here in Manhattan, the chefs gave me an exclusive taste of their first dinner. This is amazing. A delicious meal that comes with a side of hope. I have three kids. We need to fight this now so that the next generation can fight for what's next. What we can do is focus on the future, a beautiful future that we can pass on to everybody. And, and guys, Chef Stopping AAPI Hate is getting even bigger. Several intercontinental hotels will be raising money by featuring one of Kevin's dishes on their menu, and the CEO of Open Table has agreed to actually buy any unsold meals oh, in San wow. Francisco. It is, I mean, the meals are spectacular. Mm -hmm. You're just saying how delicious. Yeah, and out of something so horrible, uh, something really positive can come down. You wonder, how are people like this? But if you want to find a meal near you, go to today.com slash food, and we'll help you find it.
Chinatowns. Vibrant, diverse, the centers of festivals and culture. From San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York, to Mexico City, Lima, and Sydney, they are interwoven into the fabric of cities around the globe. Including Paris, city of romance, with a passion for food. And it's a love shared by the folks who live and work here. Here we are in the oldest Chinatown in Europe. We could also call it like Asian town because you have all uh, kinds of uh, Asian food here, not just Chinese. Catherine and Joe help run the largest chain of Asian grocery stores here. When we travel, the first thing we're looking for is the Chinatown, just for the food. When we travel, we need our Asian food. <laughs> Even though we're 100% French, we're 100% of Asian descent, and we don't want to lose either of it. We want to be 200%. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Come to French Chinatown. Yeah. And this is our unique gate. Actually, it's a combination of uh, French and Chinese culture. But it's not been easy. Large numbers of Chinese laborers first came to France at the beginning of World War I, even helping in the trenches. And yet, even today, simply gaining permission for this Chinatown gate took years of negotiation. It is the Chinese character for gate. Bon Tan arrived in France as a child on a boat. My, my parents, when they came to France, they come to France forever. No idea to going back. Back then, he couldn't even speak French. Today, he is a member of the French parliament. Look at this. And runs the family business. Importing tea, he travels back to China to select himself. His life has changed, and his community has changed too. People coming from mainland China, for example, they have in mind that they're coming here to make a better life, earn more money, and then go back to China. Mm -hmm. So it's a different uh, um, way of thinking, of, of seeing friends. It's a story reflected in city after city. London's Chinatown is located in the heart of the city, in what was once a rundown area with cheap rent. It now combines tradition, like this complimentary medicine store. Very strong. Oh, yeah. Wow. With fashionable foods from across Asia. Ellen Chu relocated here from Singapore, bringing the street food with her. Well, we have modernized this place, you know. We don't have roast up here. You have to serve the food that you, will, you yourself will eat. While Dumpling's legend is run by Jeff Long, an entrepreneur with Hong Kong roots, whose restaurant has even received a visit from royalty. It's all about great food, unity of family, getting together. So you're going to make me work for my dinner? Ah. Pearl and twist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is really not easy. He's <laughs> not likely to be hiring me anytime soon. Obviously, uh, these are my dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> I can't cook. I can't cook, guys. I asked my wife. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I'm sorry. And this is what I love about uh, <laughs> what I love about that piece though is so often during the Olympics guys you know we yes. concentrate on the traditional cultures of a particular place we don't put enough attention on the way that cultures fuse together and, yes. and particularly the impact of immigration and, and how immigration improves uh, the culture of a country and of course food unites us guys yep it right? sure does Absolutely. Such a good point. and again to, to my point tomorrow Keir Simmons is from Paris. <laughs> uh, and, and oh, you get to like get on a plane. To yeah, Paris. he gets to immigrate to Paris. <laughs> like I said, I just want to be here for a day. Just a day. Oh, we need like a week to experience. Uh, okay. Although I wouldn't want to interview Putin, so that's that's on Kier. <laughs> oh, <well>, full range. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Putin and Kier having some dim sum. All right, Kier. Thank, thank you, you my Keir. friend. <laughs>
while this month of May we are showcasing the Asian American and Pacific Islander community with a network wide series AAPI Amplified Stronger Together. And this morning we are shining a light on a nonprofit called Gold House. Yeah, they, they have a lot of supporters like Crazy Rich Asians and In the Heights director John M. Chu, also Olympic siblings Alex and uh, Maya Shibutani, the Ship Sibs, you know the Ship Sibs. Ship -sibs. <laughs> uh, and the mission of Gold House is to empower and uplift all members of the AAPI community. Right now, for the last couple of years, the Asian American community has been in the spotlight for good or, or wrong reasons. But we don't want that just to be a moment. We don't want that just to be a blip and then wait another 20 years and we get to have the attention. Turning a moment into a movement. Executive Director Jeremy Tran and President Bing Chen are leaders at Gold House. It's a collective of Asian and Pacific Islander changemakers fighting for socioeconomic equity. How is Gold House born? A bunch of us were in a room and we all looked around and we wondered why Asians just weren't thriving in society. Uh, why on media we felt like we were always portrayed as weak or the villains. We wondered why when we walked into our offices and our work, why we were employed but weren't being promoted. Across the board we wondered why does no one see us in the way that we think we deserve to be seen. And uh, we decided it was time to do something about it along with the support of some of the most influential names in the community, from actor Daniel Day Kim to fashion designer Prabhu Gurung to Olympian Nathan Chin to executives of major companies. The group established itself in 2018 with the aim to unite and uplift. Where does the name come from? What, what does Gold House mean? It means two things. One is house we're trying to breed familiarity and safety. This is a safe haven you can come home to. I think gold is actually the fusion of the 50 incredible ethnicities we have in the API diaspora. And second is we're trying to head on target the misperception that all API folks are cheap. Uh, we're not. Um, some of us are easygoing. Some of us are a little high maintenance. We do want to show that we're, there's an air of premiumness, of quality. The first part of the movement was focused on Hollywood with the organization's gold open concept, amplifying API-led films like Crazy Rich Asians and Parasite to ensure box office success. We're now uh, the first API call for every Hollywood studio, network, and streamer on everything from cultural consultation, so making sure we get script storytelling right, all the way to marketing. From partnering with Spotify to bolster musicians to creating a filmmaker fellowship with Netflix and Tribeca Studios, their success landed them a feature in Vanity Fair. Today, the influence of Gold House expands beyond entertainment, whether it's through a book club or empowering entrepreneurs with funds and resources. But the next phase will focus on helping other communities shine as well. I understand that the organization is aiming to do some some, some projects uh, with other marginalized groups, some collaborations. Uh, what, what are we looking at here? Gold House is not trying to build a world for and by Asians. That's so backwards, self-segregationist, myopic, that's not why we're here. Uh, we're trying to empower the world's majority, APIs, we're four and a half billion people, to serve and lead all marginalized folks. I know very few good ways to support another community sincerely than to invest in them to show them and put our money where our mouths are. We can share talent, we can share dollars, and we can share deals. Because I don't know that we can just wait for the old system to employ all of us, to promote all of us, or to invest in us. So much of what we recognize is important out there is the intersectionality between being Asian and Asian American and also being you know, part of the disability community, being part of the LGBTQ plus community. So where we live is finding those intersectionalities and finding ways to amplify each other. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, their ultimate goal is to, to no longer exist. They don't want to be mm -hmm. around anymore because if they're successful, there would be no need for a group to fight for representation mm -hmm. and success. But I mean, right. keep in mind, they've only been around four years. Yeah, four and years. look at what they've accomplished. Yeah. I'm so glad you did that story, well, Craig. thank you.
Anna Huang and Chloe Chan, two second-generation Chinese Americans and founders of the Mott Street Girls. They launched MSG, as they call it, during the pandemic to provide walking tours of Chinatown with a mission, help the community they love while educating people on Chinese American history and culture, something they became passionate about as volunteer docents at a local museum. We are tour guides, we are storytellers, that's what we are, you know, specializing in. So in addition to telling Chinese American history, we want to tell the stories of the business owners as well. Tell me some of your memories here, what it's meant to you. Well, I grew up in New Jersey. Me and my family would always come out here to Manhattan Chinatown every weekend, you know, buying groceries, visiting the restaurants. I took piano lessons here in Chinatown. <laughs> so then the pandemic hits, and obviously cities across the country, communities across the country were impacted, but tell me what it did here in Chinatown. It was a complete ghost town, you know, while people were still going to Little Italy, no one was coming to Chinatown because of fears of the virus. But these businesses are really struggling, and so by telling the story, hoping we bring more foot traffic into Chinatown as well. What do your parents think of what you're doing? Are they proud of you? I think <laughs> Asian parents generally don't tell you that they're <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> I think they were very skeptical at first. Mott Street Girls is their side hustle. Chloe works full time in public health as a clinical researcher and Anna as an analytics consultant at a financial services firm. My parents came here so that I could chase the quote unquote American dream, right? So I am trying to do that as well. But I think a part of me is just like, I want to connect back to my roots. There's like so much going on beyond just cheap eats and you know, designer bags. Yeah. So when someone signs up for a Mott Street Girls tour, what can they expect? They can expect a lot of walking. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I came prepared. Lucky for me, I got a private tour. So right now we're at the intersection of Pell and Dory Street. So this is one of the older streets of Chinatown. You can see this is actually what it looked like back in the day. Kind of looked the same, right? Besides the fact that they're all men, right? Because back in the day, Chinatown was known as a bachelor society. So at one point, the ratio of men to women was 200 to one. <gasps> Just think about how hard it must be to be, oh right? <laughs> <laughs> I love the street the way it's painted. Yeah. During the pandemic, the Chinatown mural project was born to beautify the streets and encourage people to visit the neighborhood. I really like how they use blue and white. It's kind of reminiscent of Chinese porcelain. We need a picture here. <laughs> <laughs> Our next stop, Ting's Gift Shop, one of the oldest in Manhattan, run by the same family for three generations. It's like fill from the brim, from the bottom to the ceiling. Oh, you don't find that, like, I love uh, New York City t-shirts here. These are really like the knickknacks that you can find, like, it really highlights, like, Chinese culture. And MSG makes sure to highlight many of the area's businesses on their social media. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> like where to go for the best sponge cake with a recipe that's been the same for decades. I feel like my family comes here every time we come, uh, come from Boston. Yeah. Or which fruit stand to hit up? So this is Moi Chong's food fruit stand. She is like here, you know, out in the scorching summers, the bitter winters, every day. And there are plenty of surprises along the way. Can you guess what this Pegasus is made of? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's made of dried egg noodles. Can you believe that? <laughs> Finally, the tour wouldn't be complete without stopping by the very restaurant where the idea for Mott Street Girls was born. I feel pretty cool. I'm on Mott Street now with the Mott Street Girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of us now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I give a tour. <laughs> Now, as you can see there, the Mott Street Girls are giving tours of Chinatown even in the cold and following COVID guidelines, of course. And for those who can't make it to New York City, they're also starting to branch out with virtual tours so you could take part even from home. Oh, that's a good idea, oh, yeah. especially considering the vast amount of, you know, the audience. They're all over the yeah. country, so. That's Absolutely. Just I just thought the whole world of Vietnamese cuisine was something that was really untapped. Growing up as the daughter of a Vietnamese refugee, Debbie Way Mullen always knew her mom's culture was special. Tell me about growing up and what being part of the culture represented. Food is such a huge part of us culturally. I didn't know that nobody else knew about all these Vietnamese cuisine secrets like Vietnamese coffee. Debbie started her career working in sustainability at World Bank. And while she was working to alleviate poverty, she found the corporate world wasn't a great fit for her. It was such a big, slow organization and just realizing that my personality was so different. Like I love to move a million miles a minute. I love to be super creative. When I learned about the Vietnamese coffee market, I thought that I could really utilize a lot of the things that I knew about the fundamentals of how you build sustainable supply 
supply chains and apply it into a, a business. How fortuitous that you like to move a million miles an hour and it's coffee. So tell me about what made you want to introduce Vietnamese coffee into the mainstream world. I knew that it was something that was so delicious. And I saw the opportunity that Vietnam was actually the second largest coffee producer in the world and just really largely left out of the specialty coffee market. That's when I really felt like there was something so exciting there. So using $10,000 she had in savings, Debbie got to work brewing her business, Copper Cow Coffee. I was just renting commercial kitchen space in the evenings and the weekends, and I was going to events like farmer's markets or holiday markets just to see how people responded to the product. Debbie shook up the traditional cup of Vietnamese coffee with unique flavor combinations like lavender, churro, and salted caramel. After two years of self-funding Copper Cow, Debbie quit her corporate job to begin fundraising. Tell me about the fundraising and what it was like walking into the room as a woman with a story that represented your culture. About 80% of our customers are women and they're millennial or Gen Z women. And you can imagine that that was not who I was pitching to. <laughs> for Yes, I could imagine. I pitched for months and months and months and got all no's. I got over 50 no's, all telling me this is niche. It wasn't until we got into several hundred Walmart doors that I was finally able to quash those, those kind of objections about it being niche. Now, six years later, Debbie is in 2,400 stores across the country. She says they've sold more than 10 million coffees. Not only is it important for you, you said, to be a female entrepreneur, but also to be a female entrepreneur representing your culture. Having degrees from Berkeley and MIT and people still wanting me to get coffee for the room, that was always just a really, really hard reality for me. For me to be able to represent that to my employees or to other uh, aspiring entrepreneurs is something that I think is so important. Isn't it ironic that you know getting coffee for the room to be a negative thing at the beginning and now you're like, no problem. I'm, I'm gonna get coffee for everybody. I gotta get paid better, that's for sure. Cooking up a fantastic pasta dish with assistant managing editor of the New York Times and founder of New York Times Cooking, Sam Sifton. And he's gearing up for the New York Times Food Festival. Ooh. It's coming back October the 8th. I'm so excited. Uh, Sam's going to be moderating a special panel.